Broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas, it's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. The show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for July 2023, Episode 77. My name is Jonathan Leung. I'm the producer, director, and editor here at the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me today, as always, is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, how you doing? Well, if I was a chocolate bar, I'd be melted. But uh, (laughs) I'm glad uh, that I'm uh, inside right now. I I see these construction workers working outside. We have had some early summer heat this year. It feels kind of like August or something already, but it is July already, which is a shock. It's like summer is almost halfway over, and it feels like it just got started. So thank you guys for being with us tonight. Uh, I know that uh, 77 episodes, that's a lot, that's a lot of episodes. Yeah, that's, doing it. that's a lot of episodes, and we <laughs> want to thank you guys for, who have watched all 77, or if you've only watched one or two, thanks for being here tonight for this one, because we're going to have a good time. we got a lot of your questions that we're going to be answering tonight, and so we're looking forward to doing that. Tim, before we get started, though, let's go over to the live chat, because there's already a lot of activity over there. And so we've got uh, Cybermind Arcade, say, he says, patiently waiting on the 26-inch Unicook Co. I ordered. Figured it will be great for getting new pickups and working till I get a tube put in them for the test bench. Yes, so Tim, have you heard, I think we talked about these Unico monitors. Yes. So they're actual 4x3 style uh, LCD monitors that fit, fit older style cabinets without heavily modifying them like you'd have to do with like a widescreen LCD. Tim, I've only heard good things about them so far, and it seems like the price is not terrible for what they are. And so if you have not checked out the Unico monitors, they do look good, Tim. Okay, so, and good. the picture looks good on them as well. Yeah, well, that's a, let us know how your project turns out. YouTube Punk is here. He says, howdy, outrunning errands at the moment, but we'll try to jump back on later. Robert's here. He says, I've got a broken neck on my Geo 8 tube. Can it, okay. can it be fixed? So, once the neck of the tube physically breaks off, that pretty much means that the tube is shot at yeah. that point. And so, um, besides finding another tube, you're, I mean, you're pretty much up a creek without a paddle, right, Tim? Yeah, it's kind of the... Um, Kind of the death death nail on a lot of things, but um, you know, it, and, and probably more trouble than it's worth, even if you find another tube. But it can be done. Um, I don't know of any way to repair them because once it leaks out, and it's kind of scary. We've done it before, though. We've had one, and to hear those things, you know, we also hear stories about them imploding and stuff. So if you ever hear one kind of hissing at you, we always say hissing's not a good sound. Uh, we think of snakes or something here in Texas. So uh, probably probably time to just chunk it in the trash and start it. Get another one. There you go. Uh, and I hate that, but it is what it is. So right. it is, you know, unfortunately. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have Geek Light uh, Geek Light 08 is here. He says greetings all. Happy Art Day, Tim. There mm-hmm. you go. Uh, Real Hammer Billy Lee is here. He says hello, hello. Unfortunately, and he says the same thing we did, Tim. Unfortunately, once the neck is broken, the tube is pretty much shot. Unfortunately, yeah. that is the case most most times. So. Uh, let's see. Geek Light 08 says, is it me or is there an echo? I don't know. Uh, if there's an echo, let us know. I, you know, we try to eliminate that as much as possible, but there may be a little bit of one. Uh, I also have some kids playing in the background, Tim, and so sometimes <laughs> I can create a little bit of noise in the background as well. So let's see what else we got. Um... Uh, Cybermind Arcade says, two weeks ago, both my house and AC, and car AC went out at the same time. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. <laughs> me and Tim have already talked about house ACs this year. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, at the end of last year, Tim, my outside unit went out. I had to buy a whole new one, and that was, you know, several thousand dollars, which is always fun. You were talking about you had to spend some money on one two as well, of them. right? Two of them? Two of them. <laughs> In the last... One, one, one last year, one this year. So Yeah, so AC units mm-hmm. are not cheap at all, as anybody who's bought one knows. And, you know, we have a good friend, Tim. I have a good friend that actually works as an HVAC tech. And even with him cutting me the good deal, Tim, it's still expensive. Yeah, it is. Because it's just the, hard, the, the actual units are expensive themselves. And so we feel you for sure, big time. So you get a pinball machine or an AC unit. But here in Texas, if you don't have AC, there's yeah. no way you're going to be able to play your pinball machine. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Current Phonograph says, Greeting, greetings from sunny, the sunny state of California, Tim. Okay. So there we go. We've got Nate Berg here. He says, got an odd question. Uh, with all this heat, should I add fans to my machines? So, I mean, it's a great idea to have fans in your machines anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, if you've got your machines in an air-conditioned place, I don't think it's that big of a deal. What do you think, Tim? Well, we we always, if it was a game that we are going to keep, uh, personal collection kind of deal, I always put fans in them, and when I worked for Chuck E. Cheese, 
I got tired on breaking down, and that was in an air-conditioned place, but just a lot of games uh, gets kind of crowded and stuff. So I'm a big fan of not only one in, but also one out, kind of to circulate that heat and get them uh, going through your arcade. So by all means, it's not hard to hook up a fan. Uh, just depends on what kind of fan you get, whether it's AC or DC, and you just hook them up to your power supply, and the game kicks on, and fans kick on. Uh, that's easy to me. I, I personally really, it's not going to hurt. And remember, in pole positions, we always recommend it because of the heat and stuff in there. So, and some of those cabinets are so thick. You know, the wood, you know, they're heavy. And so, you can imagine, uh, that's why we don't like um, to put a TV LCD in a game because of the heat, because it's not open frame. Uh, so, if any heat that you can eliminate will really help your games in my opinion. I see what you did there. I'm a big fan of fans. So I am a say, fan of fans. Big fan of fans? I'm okay. a big fan of fans. Just making sure. Fan of big fans. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Fan <laughs> of small fans, too. Fan of any fans. There you go. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, Nate Burke, should they be pointed to the PCB and the monitor chassis or just the PCB? So, if you only have one fan, I think we're a fan... Again, I think we, we usually think of that blowing out. Yeah. Okay, because we want to get the heat out of the cabinet. Now, if you've got... The, the ideal position would be two fans right you have yeah. one blowing in from the bottom and out the top exactly okay because we know the hot air rises and so as that you're bringing in the cool air from the bottom you're you're, you're uh, ejecting the hot air out the top and so if you have one fan you really just want to use that for exhaust probably only but if you're going to do a two fan you really want to get that circular motion like tim was talking about where we're circulating that cold air in and that hot air out right yeah so two fans is what we like to do we like to put one at the bottom of the cabinet and then one at the top of the cabinet on the back and then like i said once you get that circular airflow going through there it keeps your game really nice and cool but you can if you only want to put one in, just make sure it's best to go for exhaust if possible. Let's see what else is here. Um, Robbie J's here. Good evening from South Florida, Tim. Okay. So there we go. Big D Retro. Hello, guys. The soundboard on my Robotron was redone like new, but for some reason, no sound. When I hit the button, I will hear sounds run through, though. Could it be my CPU or soundboard? So it almost sounds like there's a connection issue here, right, Tim? Like it could more, be. More like there's some, uh, some reason why your soundboard is not communicating well with your CPU board. And so, and it's been a while since I've looked at Robotron. I think it's ribbon cable based. Mm -hmm. And so you may want to check, you know, just make sure all the connections between those two boards are good. That's going to be something for me. Tim, you have anything that you want to chime no, in? No, you were kind of reading my mind all automatically because uh, he says that he hears something, but then it's not, but then there's no sound, right? Right. He said, he says he can hit the test button and the sounds will run through. So right. He can run, it's like he can manually activate the sounds using the test on the But it's not board. working in, in the game. game. Right. And that's exactly what Johnson said. I would check your connections. It could have could be a bad sound board, but the fact that it works at all tells me that it's just not getting it's not getting the sound from the board like it's supposed to. Right. It's only doing it through the test. And so I would suspect uh, those cables. Now, we do have a post on our website that uh, was actually a seminar that was done by Ken Graham where we have a lot of Williams troubleshooting, like a Williams troubleshooting guide, really. Mm -hmm. And so what you may want to do is try some that guide that we have. I think it's like four pages or something like that. But if you go back and look at, for Kim Graham's seminar at the Houston Arcade uh, Group Expo, I forget what year that is, Tim. But there is a troubleshooting guide with that for Williams games that we would highly recommend as well because that can guide you through some of the stuff. And I be believe it has some schematics in there too. So for Williams games. And so you may want to check that out. That may help you with your problem. Uh, let's see. Nate Berg. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, he, he's talking about his game. So remember, he was talking about fans. He's like, they run, his games run from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every single day. But he's having games in the same location, resetting randomly, but they work perfectly. Um, they worked perfectly. He says, Terminator 2, Rush, which I, it was probably, you know, San Francisco Rush, and a photo booth think the heat's getting to all these games. So Terminator 2 and Rush are games that have, usually have pretty high load power supplies. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are games that usually have the ATX style power supply in them. They're, they run a little bit hotter than maybe your standard game. Whenever a game goes out, check the power supply immediately. And so whenever, or if they reset, see what that, that uh, 5 and 12 volts is at that point as soon as the reset happens because sometimes if you have that um, power supply just tweaked a little bit low then you may have issues where it'll reset like that and so a lot of times we will run games at like 
5.05 on the 5 volts line, right, Tim? Just so we can give it a little bit more juice. And those games in particular, Terminator 2, San Francisco Rush, are very high drain games on power supplies. And so that I would definitely turn those up a little bit past that normal 5 volts line. Tim, anything else that you have? No, I agree, but he's right, though. The heat will definitely affect it over time. It's just the more heat that builds up in there, the hotter it's going to get. You will get issues like that also. So by all means, I, like I said, still... Uh, talking about the two fan system where one blows in the bottom and blows out the top and you get that good circulation going, I think that may actually help him some too, but by all means, tweak your power supply. Sounds good. Well, Tim, we are caught up with the live chat. Um, okay. Is there anything you want to talk about that you've done this month while, before we get into some well, you know, of the questions here? You know, it's funny. We're talking about heat. I, uh, I did take a, I took a trip to South Dakota. I nice. was in Sioux Falls. Um, that was quite a trip. I expected it to be a lot cooler there, and it was not. It was 96 <laughs> degrees when I got off of the plane, and uh, the people there said, well, you're from Texas, you're used to the heat, and I'm like, I'm used to sitting inside in the air conditioning while it's hot outside. Uh, so it was definitely a little change, but beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. I really liked it. I do have a trip coming up in a few weeks to um, a Hollywood uh Florida. Near Florida, not California. So I'm in Billy Mitchell uh, territory. Maybe I'll run into Billy Mitchell Never know. while I'm out there. But uh, North Miami, I'll be in. I know we had somebody from South Florida today. Yep. Uh, so That'd be anyway, J. I'll be be in that area uh, end of the month. So, um, but you know, overall it was Fourth of July. We had always uh, loved to celebrate uh, that holiday. It was good. We need that break during the summer. Kind of seems like big push now before Christmas and things like Halloween, things like that. So, um, how about you, John? You've been, I know you've been busy. Yeah, we've been busy. Um, you know, I think in the last episode we talked about um, some of the stuff that we have going on. I don't want to get too in-depth here. If you watch the after show, you can hear more about what we've been up to, and we'll discuss that further. But we did have Independence Day, and Tim, I flat did nothing. No fireworks. No, wow. <laughs> I was like, I was wiped out. And yeah. Tim could probably tell you he expected that. So, I mean, it, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes you're just darn tired and you're just glad to have a break from everything and that's how my independence day was hopefully yours was awesome if you did something really awesome over your independence day uh please let us know in the live chat especially yeah. if it was arcade related if you went somewhere maybe played some games maybe hung out with some friends at an arcade or something like that uh, let us know in the live chat if you did something cool over your independence day holiday we'd love to hear it uh, Tim, before we get into um, our outline here, I have one more here. Silly Sausage 72 hey guys, just want to say thank you for motiv motivating me to get the paint of my Soul Calibur 2 cab that was painted blue. And you guys mentioned that it could be a Mortal Kombat cab, and it is a Mortal Kombat 2. Nice. There you go. Yeah, and taking paint off games is very common because you got to remember, like uh, operators, we're guilty of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we definitely did this. We will just paint a cabinet whatever color, uh, just because we don't want the artwork to show for the next game we're putting in in there, the next kit we're putting in there, right? Yeah. And so we'll put like cheap latex paint just right <laughs> over that artwork. Uh, it takes a little elbow grease to get off, but once you get it off, man, it'll look just like it did originally. And finding a Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet is awesome because yep. people still mm -hmm. love that cabinet. It's an, a very iconic cabinet, and so we're so glad that you went to all the effort and trouble to do that. Tim, later on in this episode, we're going to talk about one of our friends who did that and found quite the discovery when he did, right? Exactly. So um, you just never that. know what's underneath that black paint. Sometimes you need to check it out. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. So we're glad to hear that. Um, Cybermind Arcade says, I flew my FPV racing drone on the 4th. Oh, That's pretty cool. How fun. So, and you know what's become really popular, Tim, are those drone shows now. Yeah. Instead of fireworks. Right. Uh, we didn't have any of those around here, but I saw a video of some of them uh, at different places. Neat. They're pretty cool. I yeah. really think that's a neat thing. So... But uh, anyway, guys, with that all said, let us move on to the outline that we have for this episode. And the first question we have here, Tim, is from Big D Retro, who's actually here with us tonight. Okay, and he was talking about his Robotron and the soundboard, but this uh -huh. is a different problem with his Robotron, Tim. Okay. So Big D Retro writes, Hello, I watch your live channel every month. I have learned a lot. I am currently trying to adjust the image on my Cortec monitor. It is not, it is for my Robotron cabinet. I am trying to get the picture to stay still, but it's not going smoothly. The adjustments are tricky. And Tim, that's where the episode uh, title mm -hmm. comes from for this month. Adjustments are tricky. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am curious if anything else could cause the picture to keep bending and moving in one direction, etc. Thanks. And Tim, I think I have pictures of this that he sent in. I do. Okay. Let me go ahead and put those up real quick. Now, Tim, you can see here in these pictures that he's exactly right. The mm -hmm. picture is kind of bending and twisting. And he says this one on the right is about as close as he can get it to where it's kind of locked in. But even with that, you can still yeah, see still quite not. a bit of slanting mm -hmm. and uh, kind of flipping in that picture. 
And so, Tim, with all that said and done, what do you think is going on with Big D Retro's Cortec monitor on his Robotron cabinet? Mm -hmm. I did emphasize the word Cortec, Tim. Yeah, it's not my favorite brand. Yeah. But um, it is definitely out of sync. So we want to start off by checking the monitor input wiring. We want to make sure that the sync wire and everything is is wound up as is correct to where it's supposed to be. Now, we had asked the question, did you get it like this or did it develop like this over time? Because if you bought it from somebody, it could definitely be a wiring issue. If you didn't, it's probably, you probably didn't go in there and rewire anything. It just started to, to wear. And that's where we'll talk about maybe doing a, 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 trying your adjustments, which I'm sure he's done. And then also maybe doing a cap kit to try to cure this problem. But it kind of depends. If you didn't get it that way, it could be just wired wrong. And uh, so I would check your pinouts and everything and make sure that the sink wires are hooked up. Now, we always recommend that you touch up the solder, those kind of things behind those pin wires, even if you didn't do anything to it. And over time, the wires do get brittle. So if you've unplugged, plugged stuff in, those kind of things, you always want to check your connections and stuff. But more than likely, it's just the monitor starting to is is really old and starting to wear out and needs to be rebuilt right exactly uh so tim i don't think i have, I have anything to add so i'm gonna go ahead and throw up this um this slide here which kind of says exactly what you said it looks like your cortex monitor is out of sync so let's start by checking the monitor input wiring specifically the sync wire make sure that this wire is making a good and correct connection between the board and the monitor. Now we say correct here, Tim, because we know that sometimes if you got a cabinet for somebody, they may have miswired the sync wires on the monitor. Easily. Very common, okay? And so make sure that you are actually using the correct, that is actually attached to the correct pin on the chassis, the one where the sync should go. Depending on the monitor, you may need to split your sync or you may need to combine syncs, right? Like depending on what kind of game you have and the monitor that you have. And so uh, just, you know, you may want to do some research. If we know exactly what model Cortec you have, we can give you that information as well. Get back to us with a model. We can give you a little bit more. Now check that the horizontal and vertical hold, sync and sub adjustments are dialed in properly and that the pots are working. Now, Tim, pots are working is a big thing. You, if you're adjusting a potentiometer and it's not doing anything, you may need to replace that potentiometer, okay? Because they do go bad. Not all the time, but it happens. So make sure that that's the case. But if the input wires are wired correctly and the adjustments are all check out, then you could have a problem with the sync circuit on your monitor chassis or issues with the game board. That's that's uh, that could be an issue. Um, but more than likely, what we do is take the chassis out, reflow the solder on all suspect joints, and then you need to start looking at the sync circuit. And you can find the sync circuit by tracing the sync pin from the input back through the. Um, back through the chassis and you can find it that way or again if you can get us the model of cortex that you actually have we can identify that for you you may need to rebuild that section depending on whether or not it's a chassis issue or a game board mm -hmm. issue tim is there anything else that we need to cover before we move on here no bob roberts site has some really good information and how to rebuild those circuits if you're not familiar with it absolutely now he doesn't cover a lot of cortex but we can help you out with some of the cortex stuff if needed so again get us back with the model or take a picture of your chassis and we can probably identify it for you uh Cortex are not our favorite monitors, but it doesn't mean that we don't work on them sometimes. And so um, if you will get us, hit us back with either a picture of your chassis or a model number of your chassis, we can give you a little bit more information on that sync circuit. But Tim, Michael always stressed this so much, and it's something we should stress to everybody out there too. Touching up the solder can save so many headaches. Yes. Just taking the chassis out and immediately touching up anything that looks suspect or maybe even stuff that doesn't look suspect. Right. Maybe the just pots, everything. The wires, all of that. Right, because all it takes is one cracked, cold, or broken solder joint to cause a multitude of issues. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, I had a uh, G07 in a gyrus one time, and literally it had one broken solder joint on the high voltage line. Mm -hmm. And once I touched that up with solder, no problem. I mean, and, and that's all it took. It wasn't coming out. Monitor wasn't coming out on at all. The only way I found that was by tracing back through the high voltage section of the monitor. And so you have to always watch out for those. They can cause havoc. So I um, always encourage you to take the chassis out, touch up all the cold crack and broken solder joints, anything that you see that's even a little bit suspect, and then go from there. And of course, if you're going to have the, the chassis out anyway, good time to do a cap kit. You know, I mean, if we're going to pull the chassis, more than likely if it hadn't been, if it hasn't had a cap kit on in a while, we're going to do it, right, Tim? Sure. So, uh, Big D Retro is here. He says, I will check some stuff now and keep you posted during the show. Okay. So there we go. Yeah, let us know. Uh, I love what, the live yeah, exactly. Uh, let us know what you come up with and uh, give us any additional information you may have, and we can try to help you troubleshoot it as we continue on through the show here. 
Okay, Tim, we have another, uh, a couple of questions here in the live chat. We okay. have Robbie J. My Atari football stopped working. All the lights are on and the tube is illuminated, but it does not play blind. Switch the PCB, but no change. Power to the PCB, he says, question mark? Yes. Yeah, Probably time your to check your supply. voltage here. Yeah, mm -hmm. so definitely the first thing we would do would be check the voltage, make sure that the voltage is good. Uh, that's a very important thing to do. Uh, Nate Berg, House of the Dead 2, low volume even at max. What could I do for a fix? So your amplifier may be going out. Um, House of the Dead 2 cabinets typically have a audio amplifier somewhere in there. And so um, if now if you don't have an audio amplifier, you may want to put one in between the speakers and the board itself. But if it does, you may need to rebuild that. And Tim, uh, audio amplifiers are very simple. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot to it. Maybe a couple of caps, maybe a, like a transistor or two, not a whole lot. And so you could basically rebuild that whole thing just by looking at the parts. And so uh, just look at your audio amplifier board and see what kind of shape it's in. You may need to replace it. If you don't have one already, you can put one in circuit and then crank it up and it'll give you a little bit more volume as well. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I think we're caught up. And, okay. um, he can get those audio amplifiers from um, Holland Computers, Computers has yeah. them or you can get them from I mean, it doesn't uh, have to be get game specific. Nope. It's just an audio amplifier that goes in between basically the speaker and the pot and will helps you to amplify it. Exactly. <laughs> Just like it says. Nothing, I was about to say, nothing, volume. exactly, nothing, um, you know, you may be, um, a lot of times what happens though is that people will take that out thinking I don't need it, and you don't need it, technically it works without it, but you won't get the sound, right? Like it'll keep you from getting big full sound, right? And so that's why it's there. Uh, showcase cabinets typically have audio amplifiers, Tim, as you know. Bigger style cabinets typically have audio amplifiers to give you more of a big sound, because the, you know, what's coming from your board is typically very, kind of low amperage Tim yeah. and so we need something to crank that up and we show that in a 60 and one doing the opposite it's too loud right and we're letting it at, being able to adjust it down some right same way yeah exactly same so. thing okay Tim let us move on to our next question from Lynn and here we go I have a world-class bowling deluxe that comes up with a black screen and no sound the following shows on the screen system status bad system code 0001 any idea of what I need to check, or has the circuit board just gone bad? Thanks, Lynn. So, Tim, we have a world-class bowling deluxe that comes up with this, a solid black screen and an error code. Okay, so first off, not looking great for your game board, I would say. Right. What yeah. do you think, Tim? It probably is the game board at this point, but we, we talk about this all the time. Always start at power, the ASAP approach. Uh, we're going to check that power supply with a meter and making sure that we got voltage all the way from the wall, all the way through the power cords, through the fuses and everything and into that power supply that it is putting out the correct voltage. All that's happening, you probably got a board issue, but we do want to make sure that that's uh, not the problem first. Also, you want to make sure that they check the dip switches and the settings and everything is okay uh, for that game. And um, But other than that, it's pretty simple. Uh, probably is, I would suspect, the power supply a lot of times because the board will not read, it's not getting the voltage in order to process and do what it needs to do. But if your voltage is good, then it probably definitely is your board. Sounds good, Tim. So let's go ahead and throw up this slide real quick so we can just discuss it. Uh, so Lynn, it's very possible that you have a bad game board. I mean, we're getting error codes. It's not looking good, right? Before we officially diagnose it as that though, we need to make sure that the voltage getting to the board is good. So check the power supply with a multimeter and adjust it if necessary. See our post on checking and replacing a power supply for more information. Now, Tim, uh, you may have a ATX style power supply checking. That's a little bit different, but we have some videos on that. If you go back and uh, I think some of our seminar videos, Tim, that we've shown have, have us checking the ATX style power supply. So if you need that, you may go back and look at those as well. Now, if the voltage is correct, you need to check that the dip switches are set correctly. According to the manual, switches one through four should be on in bank one, switch one, and switches one and two should be on, and switches three and four should be off on the bank two of switches, okay? And you can try the test mode as well. If you turn switch one off on that first bank of switches, Tim, then that'll get you into the test mode. Because the test mode will tell you a lot of times what parts of the board may be right. going bad. Could be a certain uh, bad RAM, bad ROM, something, whatever. Right. It'll do some most, checks for right, you. Right. Most boards have like a RAM and ROM style test of some sort, and World Class Bowling Deluxe is no different. And so you could go through those test modes and see. Uh, if it doesn't boot into test mode, then you may just have a really 
really messed up board. And so you may just, you, you can either get it repaired, you can send it off to one of the people we have uh, on our resources page at arcaderepairchips.com slash resources. If you go there, we have a board repair section that you can contact one of those people and they can get it fixed for you. Or you can get a replacement board. Tim, I don't think world-class bowlings are going to be super expensive to get a replacement for. So if you wanted to do that, I don't think you're going to be, it's not going to be too bad. It should be reasonable for the most part. So uh, Tim, anything else here on Lynn's question before we move on? No, just that we love that game. Yeah, <laughs> I love World Class. It's a very uh, fun it's game fun, to yes. play. It's kind of the precursor to Silver Strike. Yes. So, um, except in Silver Strike you have a person, mm-hmm. and in World Class you just have a ball. I so, like some of the but, animation and stuff. Yeah, it's a fun. It's, mm-hmm. it's a fun game. Me and Tim used to play it all the time. So, uh, great game. Hopefully, you can get it working, Lynn. And just keep us posted on uh, you know if you try all the stuff that we that we've mentioned here, and it's still giving you problems. Let us know. We'll try to help you out further. Okay, Tim, I uh, just got one from Nate Berg in the live chat here. Is cleaning a trackball difficult? I have a Capcom bowling where you have to spin the ball a lot to the right and then the left, assuming 99% alcohol and cleaning the little rollers. Yes. Uh, so, Tim, what would you recommend for cleaning trackballs? Well, balls? cleaning the rollers is, is the key, you know. And as, you know, we always talk about, people think of WD-40 as a lubricant. WD-40 is an excellent cleaner. So I would spray those rollers really good and try to make sure sometimes it's a good time if they're not going to spin freely I, I take them out in my hand and play with them and spin them and stuff if those aren't spinning freely you can get a repair kit and just rebuild those but a lot of times you're right they'll just be really gunked up and cleaning those i like to use wd-40 uh, to clean those with because it does have kind of an oily feel and then I like to lubricate the track ball with some 3-in-1 oil that won't hurt to hurt any of those parts uh, good clean out, clean out the sensors and everything but those yeah definitely cleaning it will help and then if it doesn't still operate very good they just you know once they kind of get locked up and they're not working as good Sometimes it's just as easy just to rebuild them for, you know, less than 20 bucks. You can rebuild the whole thing most of the time. There you go. So, Nate, hopefully I answered your question. Good luck getting that trackball working. Yeah, the rollers are really really the key, like Tim mentioned. And the 3-in-1 oil will help with the spinning. Um, because once, if it starts getting, um, if it's not lubricated well in there, that ball is going to kind of stick every so often. And it's going to give you a weird feel. Especially mm-hmm. if you're playing a game like Capcom Bowling. So, Okay, Tim, I think we're caught up again. So let us move to John's question. And John says, hello, I've got a Space Invaders cabinet that is doing some strange things with the graphics. Mm -hmm. I've recapped the monitor and installed the Braze multi-game kit, and it it doesn't seem to find anything wrong. Basically, the graphics are present, but seem degraded. The edges of the letters and sprites and such aren't visible. And Tim, I want to read that again, because that's kind of a key here for this issue. The edges of letters and sprites and such aren't visible. Okay, so that's that's the symptom we're looking at. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to see if it's possible to have someone take a look at it or not. I haven't been able to figure it out. Thanks for your time, John. So, Tim, we have John here with the Space Invaders, and it sounds like, I mean, he's got the uh, Braze multi-game kit on it, which right. is pretty cool. I mean, we've had some of these multi-game kits for, like, Pac-Man and stuff like that. We haven't done that Braze one for Space Invaders, but I have heard it's a really neat kit. But like I said, the main key part here, Tim, is that he's saying that the... Um, like, I'll read it again. The edges and letters... And sprites and such aren't visible. Kind of like we're getting this little cut off. Yeah. So um, that's what we're going to focus on, Tim. What can John do here in order to fix this little kind of cut off sprite and graphic issue? Well, from our research and knowledge of these games is that a lot of times that's a monitor issue. Yep. Not so much a board issue. Which would make sense because he actually said he tested everything and his board seems good. Right. Right. And so definitely leaning monitor issue here, Tim. Go ahead. Right. So there's a a very large um, B-plus filter cap. Uh, that probably needs to be replaced and sometimes it's hard to find replacements for those uh, but there's still a few shops that that sell them but he needs a it's a good time to rebuild and uh, do some monitor repair will probably solve this issue yeah so a lot of times this is caused by bad b plus voltage tim Uh and so um there is a big cap there's kind of a cap that's right there i think they call it the can cap and it's kind of right there in that little section um with by the b plus um Mm -hmm. what do you call it adjustment stuff and so I want to go ahead and put this up here so we can uh, so we can kind of go over it here, Tim. So this is a common issue with a lot of older black and white games, okay? And it's usually caused by a, by the monitor, not the game board. We mentioned that. There's a large B-plus filter capacitor or can cap that probably needs to be replaced. Fortunately, there's a custom cap replacement uh, as the caps used in the original filter cap are no longer available. And you can get these custom caps from Arcade 
excuse me, arcade shop or from other arcade parts suppliers. Now, Tim, I put the picture of the arcade shop one here mm -hmm. so you could see what it looks like. It's kind of like on. they took a conglomerate of caps to make that one cap. Right. But it, it works the same. Exactly, and that's the idea. So you will find a link to the most common one below. Now, this one is for the um, Wells Garner V1001 uh, monitor. Please be sure to get the one for your particular monitor brand and model. This is the most common one. It is by no means the only one. <laughs> that's Correct. something we need to, to stress here. And we did link to this down below, John, in the um, in the description as well. So you can see this. There are some other um, of these can cap style uh, caps that you can get. Um, but it just depends on what, you didn't say specifically which Wells or which monitor you had. We just know that that Wells Garner is very common. The 1001 series is very common. And so we're just kind of guessing, but make sure you get the one that matches whatever the model is of your particular monitor. Okay, so if that, if you don't have a 1001, you have a different one, uh, there are some can caps available for those as well. But the key here is the B plus voltage, making sure that the B plus voltage is correct. And so you can tell you can tell if you need this by whether or not the bolt voltage is reading what it's supposed to read. If your voltage is not reading that, then obviously there's probably an issue with this can cap or something else in the in the high voltage section of the monitor. So, but uh, Tim, is there anything else you want to say about John's question before we move on? I don't think so. Okay, there we go. So hopefully, John, that answers your question. And good luck getting that Space Invaders uh, back up and running 100%. Yeah, that little... Like I said, the thing you said about cutting off, when we mm -hmm. when we see that cut off, that's really what, what was the giveaway here. And it would have been great if we saw a picture of it, Tim. I would have uh -huh. liked to see. So, I mean, if you want to send a picture in, we may we may diagnose it differently based on that. But just by what you said, we're kind of going on that. We think it may be the can cap that's giving you the trouble. So... Uh, coming over to the live chat real quick, Tim, Robbie J. Every time I watch Todd Tucky um, video, he puts a new switching power supply in a machine, but I see a lot of regular people who prefer to keep things original. Thoughts? A uh, new power supply easier to dial in voltage. So what do you think? Should you always replace the power supply? Well, you know, at the age of some of these games, it, it's a good idea. And, and you got to remember a lot of his, he's wanting to fix up and sell. So yes, if I'm going to get a game... Now, to me, and it's my personal game, I'll just wait till it dies. Sure. I'll play it till it doesn't play anymore. But if I was going to sell a game, I would go ahead because um, if it hasn't went out this week, it's going to go out next week or next year, and I would put something in there so it would last my customer a little longer. That would be my opinion on that, how I would choose that, whether it be for me, because I can always rebuild it, uh, I do like some of the, uh, the older power supplies better, and uh, some of them just seem to last forever, and they're still working. So, it, you know, we're always in the, if it's not broke, don't fix it camp. But I know why he's doing that. He's doing it to kind of bulletproof it so he doesn't get a call next month and say, the game you sold me is now already crapped out. He's trying to prolong the life of them. Right, exactly. And when you're given a warranty with your games that you're selling, Tim, it's good to put as many new parts in there as possible so that way you know that the stuff is still under warranty when you sell it. So, like, if somebody comes back and says their power supply is bad, well, you replace that. You just take that power supply off, ship it back to the people for warranty, and get another one back and pop it in there, right? Correct. And so it makes it real easy for you. Now, like Tim mentioned, though, um, games that use linear-style power supplies, Williams Games is a great example. We had the Robotron that Big D Retro was talking about mm -hmm. earlier, Tim. Uh, Williams Games, we like that linear power supply in there. Yeah, you know, I'd rather uh, just rebuild what's MCRs in there. MCRs we don't have a problem with. You know what I'm saying? that There are a lot of linear-style power supplies that work great. And so uh, switching, we kind of reserve for newer-style games anyway. Sometimes we'll put a... Uh, switching power supply in a Pac-Man's okay. Yeah. Because, you know, like the AC it transformers... Yeah. edge connector from burning and Exactly. Stuff and so, I mean, some of the older power supplies are, are bad. Some of them are really good. And so a lot of that will depend on, on what... You know, how good the original power supply is. In most, like in Pac-Man and Galaga probably going to go switcher but like in a williams game probably going to keep it the same or a midway game probably going to keep it this like uh you know anything using mcr mm -hmm. style technology i may keep it the same just because those power supplies once they're rebuilt they run pretty well and yeah. there's mods that you can put on those as well to make them run even better and so i think it really just depends on the game that we're trying to restore but on anything like 90s and older yeah i mean go ahead if they had a switching power supply in it keep the switching power yeah, keep Put a new one in there. Make sure that you're getting good voltage off of it. You know, I mean, but me and Tim have also rebuilt power supplies, like uh, switching ones. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've got I, I've got a couple in the closet that I've rebuilt after I pulled them out and put a new one in, because you know, it's even though they're like thirty or forty bucks, still handy to have around if you need a power supply. Uh, Tim, Big D Retro is back with the Robotron updates. Okay. Of which he says, I found the two sync switches on the chassis. I switched the top one to the left and powered up. The image now appeared. Just have to rotate at the neck. The tube is Samsung. 
uh, burn free. Nice. Nice. Well, hopefully you can get it. Yeah. Hopefully you can uh, adjust that image a little bit and get it to where it's perfect now. So I mean, you know, it's like, but a Samsung tube, it's a quality tube. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. most of the tubes that you find are, are pretty decent. Uh, Tim, the only exception to that would be some of the cheap Chinese tubes that we've seen from time to time. Yeah. Um, and if it's a brand you recognize, it's probably okay. Yeah. Easier. I mean, exactly. So I mean, yeah, great tube though should be fine. And in a in a Robotron, you you should have good luck with that. So. Okay, Tim. Uh, I think we're caught up, so let us move to let us move to Eric's question here, Tim. And Eric says, "Hello. I am getting this messed up screen on my high low double up Joker Poker game. It was fine when I got it. It does this. It now does this. Mm -hmm. I tried adjusting on the vertical and horizontal screw things, which uh, potentiometers, Tim. Sure. With no success. Any ideas would be greatly appreciated. Now, Tim, we have the bottom picture kind of looks okay. Uh, maybe a little bit of fold over at mm -hmm. the top, but the second picture is definitely starting to look like something we're very familiar with. Uh, yeah. Or the top picture, I should say. Right. The top picture definitely starts to look like something we're very familiar with. Tim, what's going on with Eric's uh, high-low double-up Joker poker game? Well, you're getting the vertical fold over that we talk about quite a bit. Uh, vertical collapse, sometimes we call it that. And, it, and it's not quite it, there. Yeah, but it'll get there. It's getting it won't, there. It won't be sure. long. Right. It's indicative that it's going out. So, this is a great time. Of course, like we, we always mention, after you check all your solder joints and stuff, this is a great time to go ahead and do a cap kit on it. Yeah. This is the, the picturesque model poster child for a cap kit. Needs right. it right away, and that should help you to keep that from from going getting worse and forget and we'll get better. Yeah, when we're starting to have vertical fold over, especially at the top of the screen, uh, a lot of times there are caps in that vertical section that are starting to fail. And mm -hmm. so when that happens, all of a sudden, uh, it's like, okay, well, let's go ahead and do the whole cap kit. Because if those caps are starting to fail, that means that every other cap on that board is probably about to fail. And so let's go ahead and do the cap kit first, right, Tim? Yes. Now, you could do the cap kit and still end up in the same spot. You may be getting into full-on vertical collapse. And right. then at this point, you'll need to check the whole vertical section of your monitor. That includes the vertical IC and all the stuff that's kind of around that chip. And so um, we may that's be getting That's why we're there. hoping it's early right. to stop uh, stop what you're doing, do the cap kit right now before you go damage the IC and other issues that could be involved. And a little bit more detail, a little bit uh, in-depth repair, but not hard. Right. So let's go ahead and put this up on the screen here, Tim, so we can discuss it. From your pictures, it looks like you're experiencing a bit of vertical mm -hmm. fold over slash collapse on your screen. Try removing the chassis, touching up cold, cracked, or solder, uh, broken solder joints and see if it helps. And if it's been a while since the modders had a cap kit installed, we would definitely recommend doing that as bad caps often contribute to fold over problems. And so, um, again, this we, you know, we don't always recommend cap kits, Tim. We try not to, but this is definitely something that's more along the cap kit side. We have faded or weird colors or we have um or we have some weird power issues or we have some fold over or something like that we're starting to look at caps and those kind of problems now if the monitor continues to have fold over after the cap kit and after touching up the solder joints now we're looking at a vertical like an actual vertical collapse issue and we need to look at the vertical ic chip which we talk about in our uh, post on um, repairing monitor collapse issues mm -hmm. and you all look around all that section around the vertical IC because more than likely there's something there. Touch up the solder on the vertical IC and you may have to replace that or other parts in that section. And so that's what you have to remember. Now, if you need help identifying any of that, Eric, if you'll get back to us with the model and make of your chassis, we can give you a more in-depth approach to take. So right now we're kind of giving you this general idea because we don't know exactly what kind of monitor you have. But if you need additional information, get back to us with your brand and your make of whatever monitor chassis you have in there, and we can definitely help you out more. Yeah. Tim, is there anything else you have for Eric before we move on? Yeah, I just hope it's not a Cortex. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Just kidding. So, uh, so Eric, hopefully answers your question and good luck getting that uh, fold over that you're starting to experience out of your uh, high low joker poker is that what it was yeah it was double up oh, i forgot double, double up joker, joker poker game uh tim you gotta remember a lot of these poker games use the same kind of equipment that we find in arcade in right. arcade games right i mean pretty much the same monitors same types of boards some of them are even wire jam jamma. Bottom or jamma i was about to say some mm -hmm. are even wire jamma and so you know they're pretty much the same setup the only difference is instead of having maybe a joystick you just have a couple of buttons think asteroids mm -hmm. so there you go Okay, Tim, I think we're still caught up in the live chat, so let's continue on here. We have a question from Cynthia, Tim. And Cynthia says, I bought a, an SD card fully loaded with retro games such as Pac-Man. When I started playing first, I noticed it was not centered on my screen. I built a bar top arcade system. I centered the picture, but it goes back to not being centered after I guess I turn it off. Mm -hmm. uh, what can I do to fix this? Also, the joysticks sometimes won't go up 
to play Pac-Man. Please help. So, Tim, we have two little issues here, and it sounds like Cynthia is probably running some sort of emulator-based system because we have yes. an SD card here, okay, and that's pretty common. And so there's two problems, though. One, mm -hmm. um, the picture's not centered on the screen, and I'll adjust it, but for some reason it doesn't save that. Okay, that's problem number one. The second problem is that sometimes the up on, on my joystick when I'm playing Pac-Man Pac does not go up. And so let's tackle these two problems real quick, Tim. Let's talk first mm -hmm. about that that very first issue with it being centered. What can we do about okay. that? Well, first, let me say this. Boy, did we get your understand your pain in this one. We have seen this many times, and it kind of took us a while to figure it out ourselves because it would be so every time we go to play the game, we'd have to go into the settings and readjust everything, and then it would be fine until we turn it off, and then it would do it again. So what we have found is sometimes instead of just cutting off the power to the monitor or unplugging the game, um, you, it's not always saving. So you can turn it off at the monitor, right? Now at that we the did, power at switch. At the power switch right. of the monitor. Correct. On the side of the monitor. Right. Instead of just unplugging it from the wall or the power switch of your game, turning it off there, waiting a few minutes and turn it back on, sometimes it would save it like right. that. It didn't like it when we just unplug it from the wall or something. So that seemed to help us, and hopefully that will help you uh, with your issue. So it's just, it's basically not saving it, but by turning it off at the power button switch on the actual monitor itself, on the L LCD monitor, sometimes that will save it. And um, I, I think there's a couple of maybe other things that we've tried in the past, but that seemed to be the, the best fix that we found. Now, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and we have the second problem of the up direction now. Yeah, and the up direction, that's pretty simple. Um, we have some videos that will help you with this. But uh, what happens is it's the backwards from the way you think. It's up is actually down. You know, when you're pushing the joystick up, the lever is pushing down on the back switch. So switch closest to you, or if you flip it up, it might be farther away from you if it's upside down. That switch right there is C. Turn, push the button up. I mean, push the joystick up and see which switch is activating. It could be a bad switch, but more than likely it's the connection going to that switch. And it'll trick you sometimes thinking which one it is. So I just do like I'm playing the game. I'm hitting up and I'm looking. I'm okay, it's that switch right there. And then I, a lot of times it's a broken wire or just a wire that needs a new connector put on it. If, especially if it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Now, occasionally we've had to bend the switch just a hair to make it a little more sensitive. Um, so look up under your joystick. I know Johnson's going to show a picture of one, but one of those switches that controls the up. And what we have done before, if you're not sure it's a switch, you can switch it with another one and then see if now the problem is it won't go right. And you can just replace that one switch uh, that you make an X on it that it's bad and get another one. They're not that expensive in a good way. But most of the time, the switches, now the little round cherry uh, switch is what's called the, the button on the switch. If that's worn, you need to replace the switch. If you're like our friend Steve and you're good playing at Pac-Man and you're really moving and going up a lot, Pac-Man's a game I would say you go up quite a bit because you start off a lot of times at the bottom of the screen so you're constantly going up it may just be worn out in that case you would replace the switch agreed so um and i'm going to say something the regular show reminded us of too here in a second here tim in the live live chat but first things first let's cover what you said and so we have had the issue with it not saving the settings before and um try adjusting the settings to your liking then turning off the monitor using the power switch on the monitor instead of just cutting the power to the monitor okay sometimes the adjustment settings are not saved till the power switch is pressed of course this could also be due to software settings uh -huh. so be sure that you check those as well and that's what regzer show chimed in here tim and said a lot of her centering image issue could depend on the front end emulation system it's using retro pi retro arc launch box etc so it could be that but the fact that she can adju adjust it get it set right and then when she turns it off and turns it back on it goes back to where it was a lot we've seen this with the monitors we worked with that if we, we don't turn, save the settings exactly if we don't turn it off at the power switch it won't save those settings there's something that happens when you turn off the power switch that runs through a program that goes through and saves those settings and so try that and see if it works but if that doesn't work regzer shows right there may be software settings that you need to adjust in your emulator in order to get that centered so think of it kind of like a tv in your house 
Most of the time, you turn it off with your remote. You don't yes. go and unplug the TV from the wall. Right. The reason why is because there, it's like a, it's like shutting down your PC. Um, there's things that saves and goes on. It has a little bit of power for just a little bit that saves some things. But when you yank it from the wall, you're hitting it really hard with right. the power and doesn't have time to shut down properly. So just like a computer, think about it like that. And then, of course, the up direction. As far as the up direction on your joystick goes, you can test the up micro switch by using the continuity check on your multimeter. If the switch is good, could be a wiring slash software issue. I mean, it's not unheard of. Um, wiring would be our first guess, though. And like Tim mentioned, uh, you'll see this joystick has the little levers on it. You mm -hmm. may need to adjust those levers in order to get it to work properly. You can try switching the switches themselves on the joystick. Switch like the left switch with the right switch, vice versa, and see if that works. Um, but overall, a lot of times when we've seen this, it's more of either a wiring issue or a switch issue mm -hmm. right Tim yeah the switches wear out and also but it's usually a wiring issue first yeah so uh, so Cynthia hopefully answers your question if you have any additional um, I you know comments or anything please let us know if you've got some more information you'd like to share with us about your issue we'd love to hear that but hopefully these uh, ideas that we've given you here will help you to uh, solve it and please keep us updated if you need additional help now, Tim, we had Philbert here, and uh, he had a problem with the 60 and one He says, when he tries to set the volume, it always de defaults back to where it was originally. How can I solve this? And Regzer Show chimed in saying, before the e you exit the volume section, you need to hit the enter button or the start player one start yeah, button, player typically. player one start. And that will save it. Now, these boards are cheap. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these boards don't work the way they're supposed to. Right. You will get bad 60 and one boards all the time. Okay, because they're man manufactured, mass produced, as cheap as possible. Okay, and so you will have times where you'll have problems with that save function. Um, in that case, you can either get a replacement 16 in one board, or you could buy the little volume uh, rheostat slash potentiometer that they have at Holland Computers, right, Tim? Mm -hmm. And then just wire that in between and use that rheostat instead to adjust your volume, which actually makes it kind of nice because then you don't have to restart the game every time you want to set the volume, right? Yeah, because a lot of times when we've had 16 in one boards, um, we could get the volume right set for one game, but then as soon as we went to another game, it was either too high or too low. It's not real consistent, and this way, all we have to do is just reach around and turn the volume up or down. Seems a l it's a little bit easier for us, but he is exactly right. When you go through that setting, unless you hit, it's uh, player one start, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's player one start. And, and it'll tell you in the manual, I know. And when you got to hit it, and it'll come up on your screen and Set save it. Set up okay it. or something yeah. like that. If it doesn't do that, then it didn't save it. Yeah. So it'll say, like, I think set up okay. If it says that on the screen, then you save the setting. But, you definitely yeah. have to hit a button to save it. And okay. maybe your fire button or something. I think it's a player one start. For sure. So, okay, Tim. Uh, oh, Delusional's Arcade's here. What's up, Delusional? How's it going? Mm -hmm. So, Okay. I think we're caught up on the live chat, though. Okay. So let us... Um, now, Tim, we're to our quick question and answer section. All Look right. at this. So rapid we're, we're, fire. Yeah, we're going through here pretty quick. So uh, in this portion of the show, we rapid fire three or so questions at Tim for him to answer. And Tim, um, I believe Bob is actually in the live chat with us tonight. He had a question about humidity. We're going to get okay. to him in a second. I just want to say that if you're here, Bob. And so we'll be talking about that. But I'm going to throw three questions right at Tim, and he's going to fire right back with three answers uh, on these topics. So uh, let us go ahead and look at what we have in this section today. And so, uh, Tim, we have two from Bob. First one, I have a huge basement and I want to utilize, uh, I want to utilize for my arcade games. Nice concrete floor, an area of about 25 by 25. I'm worried about dampness. What should the proper humidity levels be so my machines aren't damaged? And then he also says, I heard that Wells Garner has a new old stock uh, in a warehouse. I'm always looking for CRT monitors, especially color vectors like the 6100. Um, have you ever heard of this? Okay, so that's right. pretty easy. And then GN says, do you have any videos that are directly for bingo machines from Bally? Okay, so, um, of course, Tim, those are more like pinball machines, right? Right. And so these are pretty basic questions. We got two from Bob, one about humidity, one about an uh, <laughs> a uh, old stock warehouse from Wells Garner, and then GN, who's, who's asking about some bingo machines from Bally. And so, uh, Tim, with those in mind, let's go ahead and take them one at a time. So let's talk about humidity real quick, Tim. I'm in a basement, 25 by 25. What kind of humidity levels do I really want to have in there in order to run games? Well, there? there's one thing we know about here in Texas and Louisiana and anywhere in the south is humidity. Absolutely. We deal with it on a constant basis. We're currently right now, we're running about 70 to 80 percent humidity, which makes it really hot. But I know what he's talking about on concrete floor. As long as you don't see sweating or condensation forming, probably not something you got to really worry about. 
you want to be at about 60 percent or less uh we can def we had a day a couple weeks ago about a week ago it was like 95 but it was like 50 percent humidity and it was like a world of difference versus 98 and 80 percent uh we, everybody could tell everybody was talking about how cool it was that day and you thought it was 80 degrees but it really was only a few degrees difference so as long as you can get it to about there I'm sure that there are dehumidifiers and things that you could buy. Just keep an eye on it. As long as you don't see condensation building up, though, you should be fine. So what about a new old stock warehouse from Wells Garner, Tim? I haven't heard of that. Um, I, I would probably say that's probably uh, more wives' tale or or uh, fiction fact than, than fact, because if it was... I think we'd probably hear a little more buzz about an, that. An old wives' tale instead of new old stock? Is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, kind of a rumor mill there. I don't know if that's true. Uh, but, of course, if it is, I, I know who would know. You can always contact Wells Gardner themselves. They may have some new old stock laying around, but I doubt it. Okay, and then the last one, Tim, um, Bingo Machines by Bally. We don't have any videos on those, Yeah, right? we've never shot a video on that. In fact... Um, you might could... Um, We've never even come across too many of them. Most yeah. of the time we see them, they may be at an auction. But, you know, that age of, of bingo machines, the age of bingo machines is pretty old, Tim. Yeah. Some of them even predate a lot of pinball machines. Yeah, so we're not, we're not exactly the people to ask for that question, but we'll hook you up with some people who probably do know a lot about it, and maybe that'll help you out. Absolutely. So, Tim, let's go ahead and just kind of review what you just said. So, on Bob's first question, as long as you don't have condensation or moisture kind of forming, then you should be okay. Um, anything below 60 seems to be the consensus between most people, with an ideal being between 45 and 50 percent humidity. Right? right. So, that's what we were talking about on the humidity question. Like Tim said, we've not heard that there was a new old stock warehouse somewhere, but you could always contact Wells Garner, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do it, but if you want to, you can call them up or you can contact them via the contact form on their website. They are very friendly and good to deal with. Tim's dealt with them several times when he worked at Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, always had good luck with them, I assume? Yeah, very, very good luck. Yeah, so I mean, they know their stuff. They're good guys. So um, you can always contact them and see if they actually have one. And on the bingo machines, unfortunately, we do not have any videos specifically on bingo machines. We do discuss some concepts that may help you with those kind of repairs, but we are going to refer you to the For Amusement Only podcast, and there's a link here, Tim, that you can go to. I'll also put it down below, because those guys work on pen on bingo machines almost exclusively. Okay, And good. so if you need help with bingo machines, I will say check out those guys, because right. those guys do it all the time. Uh, we do not. And so uh, definitely check out their podcast. It's a great podcast, and they know a lot about those styles of kind of pinball machines, bingo machine type games. So... Okay, Tim. Now, um, we're finished up with the outline here, but Philbert came back and said, where would I wire that potentiometer? So if you get the volume rheostat from Holland Computers, which is the one that we recommend, and Tim, we show this in our video on, on assembling a cocktail cabinet. Yeah. You want to put that potentiometer in between your 60 and 1 board. So basically, the, the, um, the wires for the audio coming from the 60 and 1 board connect to the rheostat, and then those wires connect out to the speaker. So you're actually wiring it in between the 60 and 1 board and the speaker. And what that does is it just gives you a volume knob that you can use to control the volume there without having to go into the test mode all the time. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about the Holland Computers one is it's already pre-wired to kind of set up. Mm -hmm. It's super easy to hook up, and they have a diagram along with it on their website that you can check out. And we've linked to it in previous shows. I'll have to dig through our stuff to find the link again. But if you go to hollandcomputers.com and you search for volume rheostat, you'll find it. Or if you just do a search on our website for volume rheostat, you'll probably find it. Uh, but it's only like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. And oh, hey, they got 15% off right now. I think through today or tomorrow. Through tomorrow. Okay. So you can get an extra 15% off that as well if you want to. Um, and. Um, I forget what that code is. I think it's July 4th, 2023. July 4th, 2023. I'll look it up. But um, you can get an extra 15% off that rheostat. But it already comes kind of pre-wired. Super easy to hook up. And we do show it in our video on assembling a cocktail cabinet. And Tim, I have chapters in that video. So if you jump to the volume or the audio chapter of that video, you don't even have to watch the whole thing. Okay, you can yeah. just jump there and you should be good to go. So um, I was going to see if I can find the... Um, the code real quick for Holland Computers so you guys can do it. And Tim, I actually bought something with this code myself. Yeah, they so. actually, they're always, seems like they always run a sale around every holiday. Every holiday. They just seem like, so if you're thinking it's holiday coming up, good time to get some arcade parts from them guys. Agreed. So, well, my phone is not, is being the slowest ever. It seems <laughs> like that's always how it is. So, 
But um, yeah, so I mean, you can definitely, uh, if you do a search on their website, I was about to say, for some reason, the, the discount code isn't, if you sign up for their email, I think you'll get it. You know what I'm saying? You'll get the pr promotional email for this one. So let me do this real quick and see if that helps at all. So my phone. Holland. Okay, we can sit here and watch me Google something. That's really fun, isn't it? Yeah. But not really. Uh, so I'll let it, maybe it'll come up here in a second. I can give you guys that discount code that you can use. So we do want to save you some money if you're going to invest in that. So, and I'll see if I can find that Rio stat. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on. Here it is. It took that long, Tim. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now, if you use, I was right, July 4, 2023, all okay. together, then you can get 15% off all your arcade parts right now. And uh -huh. this is through tomorrow. So it, it expires tomorrow. So you have till tomorrow to, to go ahead and get that. Uh, Tim, we've used Holland Computers Parts. We are very good friends with Bill, who runs Holland Computers. Dude's mm -hmm. super nice. His whole team is good. You can call them if you have problems wiring it, and they will help you even. So mm -hmm. um, we want to really thank those guys. They put a ton of work into the stuff they sell. And Tim, they sell the best JAMA harness on the market, the one that's all, the only one that we found that's actually printed in English. Right. And so mm -hmm. while you're getting that rheostat, that volume potentiometer, pick up a JAMA harness too. You know, because I mean, everybody needs a jam of harness around, right, Tim? For sure. Yeah, you always need one. So, okay, Tim, uh, with that out of the way, we've got a question from Mr. Dwayne79. He says, I need some advice. I bought a full size arcade that has been gutted. It has a flat screen monitor and the controls have been wired to a USB hub. Uh, so, should I use a Raspberry Pi or a Dreamcade Replay or Pandora's box? I have all for it, three. So I would say the choice is yours. Right. Um, the fact that it's already hooked to a USB, USB hub or USB encoder um, kind of makes it very Raspberry Pi friendly if mm -hmm. you want to do that. If you want to go Pandora's box, you're going to have to probably rewire it JAMA because I don't think you can hook the USB controls directly up to that. Um, the Dreamcade Replay, I believe you can hook up USB too. So that would those two would probably be pretty plug and play with the way it is now. But if you want to go Pandora's box, you're probably going to have to go JAMA. Okay, so you'll have to do rewiring on that USB, on the USB connection and go with JAMA. So, I mean, it's really up to you. Raspberry Pi is very powerful. But if you want to play some some of those games that require a little bit more oomph, um, such as maybe Dreamcast or something like that, mm -hmm. and some of the newer style arcade games, then you may want to go with like a, 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 the Pandora's boxes, the new ones, like the 10th anniversary one, which is the new one that's out, Tim. Mm -hmm. That thing can play all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm very impressed with what they've been able to play on that. So um, you will probably get better performance out of that than you will out of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm not sure about the Dreamcade replay because I just haven't had any experience with it, but... Um, Pandora's boxes nowadays play pretty much any game you, you could want. They're as good as what MAME used to be in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, if it were me, I'd probably go Pandora's box because it's easy, it's simple, front end's already built. But there are plenty of Raspberry Pi images out there that would work just as well. Don't just You just don't have the power that you have with, like, the, the Pandora's box, which is already kind of pre-made to run, all, run a lot of games that may be tough to run on the Raspberry Pi. So, is that a good way to say it? Yeah. Are we good? Okay, there you go. Well, Tim, let us get into some news for July 2023. And Tim, we had this uh, story pop up this month, and I thought it was super cool. And and you actually have kind of an Atari uh, shirt on today, so it kind of goes along with your shirt. Uh, Atari is releasing a new game, Mr. Run and Jump, as an Atari 2600 cartridge. Now, Tim, this is being released for you know Xbox and PlayStation and PC and a lot of other things, but they're also releasing an Atari 2600 version. Right, so you can play cool. it on your 2600. Right, exactly. So, Atari is releasing their new game, Mr. Run and Jump, for the Atari 2600. This is the first Atari-released 2600 cartridge since the 1990s and includes modern upgrades like gold-plated connectors and over 30 hours of gameplay. 30 hours of gameplay on Atari cartridge seems like a lot. It does. Is that just me? Price is 60 bucks, and pre-orders will be available soon, and there is a link there to where you can you can see the game if you're interested. So uh, that's definitely something you can go with. So, uh, But uh, really cool stuff, guys. I mean, how long has it been? It's staying here since the mm -hmm. 90s, since we've seen an Atari-released one, right? So, um, But uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Tim, you got to support it, what Atari is doing lately um, with the printing of the PCBs. I know they don't have parts on them, but still. And then now releasing an Atari 2600 cartridge. Tim, I think this is Atari moving in the mm -hmm. right direction. I think so. I'm not saying that they've got it all figured out. I'm not saying that they're a perfect company by any means, but 
I think the one thing they've always needed to do is to embrace the retro audience, right? And so, so, I mean, because they are a retro brand when we really think about it. And so the fact that they even offer printed circuit boards, even though they don't have the parts on them, is pretty cool. And the fact that they're even offering a a new Atari 2600 cartridge is pretty cool. And so um, even if you're not like a big fan of this game or the printed circuit board thing, I applaud their efforts for trying to embrace this retroness while also giving people some really cool things, you know, in the process. Like... Mm -hmm new cartridges and PCBs and stuff like that. So um, I, I think it's pretty cool. What do you think, Tim? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I think it's cool. So um, I, I almost I, want to buy one just to keep it, just yeah. to have. I mean, $60 is a lot, but Tim, you were buying Atari games when they were 50 bucks in the 70s, <laughs> That's right? right. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's like we, we've had a little bit of inflation, but not a whole lot. So, mm-hmm. And, and this will probably be a collector's piece for a lot of people, I imagine. So mm-hmm. there you go. Okay, uh, Tim, we had this article from Salon that I thought was really interesting. We actually linked to it. Uh, Pinball is of the body. Why modern tech can't recreate the world under glass. That's the title of the article. This article discusses how pinball is a game that is of the body and how it cannot be recreated by modern technology. True, right, Tim? I think so. The author argues that pinball is a game that requires physical skill and cannot be replicated by digital technology. The article also discusses how pinball machines are built to last and how they are not subject to plan obsolete lessons like so many modern technologies right Mm. when they built arcade games i mean they they didn't build them to last pinball machines i feel like are built to last arcade machines i feel like aren't but if you compare the way they were built compared to the stuff that's built now the stuff that's built now is basically built for obsolescence right like they literally want the stuff to die on the vine it seems like you know they don't want you to be able to repair it Arcade games, even though they only wanted them to run maybe a month, two months, three months, maybe a year max, they're still built with repairability in mind, yeah. which is always something interesting. It's like, you know, there's a reason why Atari released the book, right? The book right. is like your manual for fixing Atari games if you've never touched one, right? right? And so they were meant to be repaired, but so much of things, so many items nowadays, Tim, are not meant to be repaired at all. They're meant to be thrown away. And that makes me sad mm-hmm. because it, it not only does it make me sad because I like fixing things. I think fixing things is a good skill. It, make, it gives you a better understanding of how things work but i also think it's sad because um we're throwing away all this stuff and just sitting up in landfills and just you know messing up the environment and it's like we need to stop doing that if we can if we can at least take the parts from things that we may not be able to fix and reuse the parts if nothing else then we're better our whole world is better off than than just throwing it in the trash right and so you know it's just planned obsolescence is a bad idea Mm -hmm. period and so now with that said, a lot of companies are getting away from that, right? And we're starting to move into, I love right to repair, Tim. And we posted some mm-hmm. stuff about right to repair because we do think that that should be a thing, that people should be able to repair their own stuff and that they shouldn't be, they shouldn't require like direct manufacturer intervention to fix things, right? Because that's how arcade Agreed. games are, right? Like, I mean, people could fix arcade games. You didn't necessarily need Midway's help or, or Williams's help to fix an arcade game. In fact, they would give you all the tools to do it because they want you to do it, mm-hmm. right? And so, because they know if that game's up, it's making money, and you're a happy customer. And if that game's down, it's not making money. You're not a very happy customer, right? Correct. So, I mean, it is what it is. And so, with all that, with all that said, um, the fact that you know pinball machines and arcade games are built with repairability in mind is a really important thing to us, and we hope that more things will go that way. But this article kind of talks about pinball in particular and how we can't recreate pinball in a digital platform. People try, and it's okay, right? Yeah. But it's really more of a physical game. And that's what the article is really getting at, Tim, is like going back and comparing this physical game of pinball to all of this planned obsolescence and all of this digital stuff that we have now. There's a reason why pinball sticks out like a store thumb, you know, when you walk into a room, and right. it's because it's different than all the rest of the stuff that's out there. Video games can be replicated pretty well on, you know, phones, but but pinball can't, right? It's a, it, Because of its physicality, it can't. And so if you haven't read the whole article, it's very interesting. It talks about repairability and people who repair pinball machines and some other things as well. So, highly recommend. Okay, Tim. Speaking of, of paint, we talked about paint and there being right. Mortal Kombat 2 under there earlier. Uh, Tim, one of our good friends, actually found something a little different under his paint. Do you want to? Why don't you take this one? Okay. And we'll just read in the article here. It says, Man's Mystery Purchase Unveils Stunning Surprise. And there's a link there, too. Patrick Scott Patterson found an old arcade cabinet at an auction in Denton. The exterior displayed a game called Mr. Do, but Patterson said he knew it used to be something else. So he bought it, took it back to his warehouse. Patterson spent the entire month of May carefully wiping away the paint. By the time he finally removed the top layer of paint, he had uncovered the original artwork for Sega Samurai, 
one of the rarest arcade cabinets in the world. Okay, now full disclosure, we're very good friends with Scott. We've been yeah. good friends <laughs> with and and Tim introduced me to Scott, but Tim and Scott go how far back, Tim? Um, probably uh, that'd be late nineties. Yeah, so I mean, you yeah. guys go back like thirty years almost. Yeah, almost. So I mean, you know, but I and I I can't tell you how many arcade auctions we went to with Scott, where I would just sit around and talk with him. He's such an interesting guy, good guy to um, to just you know shoot the breeze with and talk to. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, um, he had this thing nailed. I think from the get go, Tim. He mm-hmm. saw the cabinet. He knew he knew what it was, or at least had an idea of what it was. Picked it up for a pretty good price, and ended up you know basically fulfilling his suspicion here and, and finding a wonderful Sega Samurai. Now, here's the thing about Sega Samurai, Tim. It's not really a fun game to play, uh-huh. um, but it is rare Pretty as rare. all get out. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. In fact, uh, we I've never seen one. Mm-hmm. Ever. Like, ever. And we've seen, golly, Tim, what have we seen? Uh, we've seen a lot of arcade games. Right. We've been to a lot of auctions, Hardly a lot of shows. Very few that we haven't seen. Probably right. on our hand. But Sega Samurai is not one that we've ever seen or played. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, just to show you how rare it is. And so, he's trying to sell it, Tim. He's asking top dollar for it. And he should. Because, you know, it's really a collector's piece. And I hope it goes to somebody who will really appreciate it. Uh, but we want to applaud Scott for doing this, man. Because it's a lot of work. And Tim, he... He did not use any chemical strip stuff. He literally just kind of went to town with just, you know, basically elbow grease and some soap and some stuff. He didn't want to damage the artwork underneath. So he's trying not to use some of the chemical, like, citrus strip stuff uh-huh. that we usually use because he was scared he might damage the underneath. But as you saw in that in that photo, Tim, it is beautiful. Yes. Like, when he's got all done, it just looks remarkable. And so, um, again, just what a pickup. Great job, Scott. Uh, and like I said, Scott's been doing this for so long, Tim, at this point that... He knows what to do. He knows sure. how to fix games, and uh, and you know. But we always like to see things that we haven't seen or rare things. You know, it's always good to see that. You know, and it's very rare that we see rare games now because a lot of times we think that most of them have been destroyed, right? And it's like games are only getting rare. And the fact that he could save this one and and restore it a little bit, pretty cool stuff. So. Um, Big D Retro, uh, come back with our update, Tim, real quick. He says after making adjustments on the image on Robotron shortly after the image went all color like initial startup would um, would get number error on CPU board the error did not happen on several power ups hmm check that power supply for sure um, and make sure you're getting good voltage there because if it's coming up with that error now you could have you could have some bad chips and stuff you may want to run through the self test on that as well but um, but you know check the voltage on that make sure you're getting good voltage up to that board so mm-hmm. uh, let's see what else we have here okay I think we're good uh, as far as the live chat is concerned. And we have our last story here, Tim. And this is kind of heartbreaking in a way because, I mean, I, I saw this company's products. And, Tim, we haven't talked to him, talked about them a lot here. I think we've covered a couple of stories on them. But um, II Arcade, which is right. uh, basically another home arcade manufacturer, declares bankruptcy. Okay, And so we have the link here so where you can see it on Twitter. Um, II Arcade Inc. has sent a letter to its supporters stating that the company plans to declare bankruptcy. The company was known for their home arcade units that featured an online store where you could buy licensed games. The online store ceased operation on June 21st. Owners can no longer purchase games on their web store nor download already purchased games onto their system. Hopefully the mod community will be able to keep these cabinets alive. And Tim, um, when we started, when we first talked about II Arcade, I didn't know if the company really had a great business model. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's like, um, I understand the ability to buy games and everything, but, um, you know, buy, you know, digital games on this arcade platform and everything. I mean, there's, there's some appeal to that, but it just didn't seem like it was in it for the long haul, per se. They were selling their hardware really cheap at times, so cheap that I actually even thought about maybe buying one at certain points. But, you know, the pay for platform, I mean, now the people who have invested in this platform are basically up a creek, which yeah. really sucks. I think the mod community has already started to do some modding to it that'll, you know, enable some emulation and stuff, which is really good. But um, it just, you know, you have to be really careful when buying into an ecosystem nowadays because sure. you just never know how long that ecosystem's going to be around, right? And then once they drop support for it, then you know it's like, man, it just really st- it stinks because mm-hmm. you're basically you spent all this money on games, and now you can't download those games again. You only can play what's basically available to you at this point, and so. Um, just kind of sad. I mean, I never want to see businesses go out of business. I mean, I don't even care if it's a business that I don't like. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, businesses going out of business stinks because every business is somebody's dream, right? Like every one of these businesses, there's somebody behind them that put up a lot of money, a lot of capital, or maybe some investors behind them who put up some money and capital. And then, you know, for it to go up like that is always a sad thing to me. So, I mean, you know, so, um, 
you know, just I hate that uh, that they're going out of business, that they're having to declare bankruptcy. And for all you guys who have units out there, we're really hoping the mod community is going to step up and kind of give you the give you the opportunity to maybe run some email layers or some other things on those cabinets. So, but um, again, kind of a sad thing for those of you guys who invested in that platform, put some money into it and everything. But like I said, the mod community hopefully will step up and we'll get to see some good stuff. So, okay, Robbie J, what's the best way to take a layer of paint off a cab? Now... Um, Scott just basically did it with some soap water and a lot of elbow grease. Right. So that's one way to do it. A citrus strip is a really good product. And for the most part, we haven't had it damage any underneath artwork. Right. So, um, and you can get that at like Home Depot, Lowe's, your favorite home improvement store, whatever one you want to go to. But citrus strip is good stuff. And so I, you know, if you want to use a chemical thing, that will save you a lot of, um, a lot of arm pain if you use that, because it will help take off those layers of paint underneath so that that... And a lot of times, like I said, it will not damage the original paint, which is really nice. Um, if you're worried about that, though, you're just going to have to kind of get to town on it. So, mm -hmm. you know, take a rag uh, and some soap and water and just kind of, you know, just kind of rub it as best you can. Kind of get it peeling a little bit. Like I said, when we would paint the cabinets, Tim, what would we use? Cheap, mm -hmm. Cheap. latex, paint. Right. <laughs> and so, exactly. Cheap latex paint, as anybody knows, comes off pretty easy. You know, if you mm -hmm. just rub it really, really good, you can get that off of there. And so, you know, it's just up to you, though. Um, if you want to use citrus strip, that can, if somebody used tougher paint, like maybe an oil based paint or something, sometimes citrus strip's a little bit better on that. It just really depends on, on what, what the operator, whoever owned the cabinet before you painted it with. So, any other suggestions for a paint removal tip? No, that's always our go to, is the citrus strip. There you go. So, Nate Berg, what would you suggest on saving PCBs from liquor spills? I have a crazy taxi at a bar, but someone spilled beer on the I.O. and fried it. What would you suggest to pr protect games from future spills? This is a tough one. Because uh, there's, I mean, if, look, if, if Liquid gets on a game board and it was running at the time, it's pretty much fried. Okay, yeah. you're going to have to get it repaired. Or you're going to have to repair it. Well, we've had some luck in the past at Chuck E. Cheese because you weren't supposed you know, Chuck E. Cheese, you know, has all the tables and stuff around, so there's constantly games, drinks in the game room. Right. Um, so what we did on a couple machines that were suspect to stuff like that, especially sit-downs or something where it could actually pour in there, uh, we took a very, very, very thin uh, layer of, you can buy this plastic sheeting, uh, like at Home Depot or something, and uh, we would... I basically screw it into the wall and just let it drape over the PCB so that if anything hit it, it couldn't hit the PCB. And I'm talking about thin. Uh, so you don't want it to be adding heat, which is another problem you have to watch out for. But they make some plastic sheets that we did that with, almost not much thicker than a laminate sheet or something like that, if you can imagine it. But real flexible. So almost like, uh, almost like the kind of plastic. Would it be like the kind of plastic you'd use for like, um, like um, what? What's a little the, like for painting. Yeah, or something? I was about to say like. Paint. No, a little bit thicker than that. It's actually a plastic. Uh, maybe maybe I'll have to look it up. I'll send you a link or something. But uh, we actually what they used it for, or kind of think of it this way: if you've ever worked in a restaurant, there's those plastic sheets when you're going into a cooler, and you kind of have to separate the curtains. It's like that, but about. Um, less than half of that thickness okay there you go that's pretty cool yeah and you cover the plate that way anything that hit it where we where we would have the problem a lot of times i did that inside the bill changers that's where they were always getting drinks spilled up in there and they would run down because people would set their drink down and they would be putting their money in and the drink would spill have more room more, more than one like that and i put that stuff over it and didn't happen anymore yeah tim worked at chuck e cheese when they had bill changers yeah, right. <laughs> so, exactly i remember the bill changers yeah so yeah but i think that's a great idea tim i didn't mm -hmm. even think about that so there you go good 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 input as always so uh let's see um Wii's 34 about a mispack with mcr power break will that work game was not running it will work um we talked about mispacks earlier though if you want to go power supply on a mispack probably just go a switcher mm -hmm. um on any kind of pac-man typically uh, putting a switcher in there is fine and it saves like tim mentioned it saves the edge connector a lot because if you if you use like um if you use like the original 
the original um, power uh, transformer that's in there, that AC voltage a lot of times will wear pretty hard on those pins. Now the MCU, the MCR bar board that's in there is basically like a linear style switching power supply, right? Yeah. So I mean, it, it it's it's sending DC voltage more than likely to the game, and so in a way, it already is a switching power supply. But you may want to you may want to take it out of there just because I mean, there's no reason for it to be in there, and it kind of doesn't go with the game, uh, and just go with the traditional switcher. Because, I mean, it'll accomplish the same thing. But if you, I mean, if, if it's working, you said it wasn't working. If it was working, I'd probably leave the MCR in there. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, I'd probably replace it with a standard switching power supply. Oh, great. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, let, uh. Okay, and he says thinking about changing it out. Yeah, probably probably for the best. So. I think so. Okay. Well, Tim, I think we are all done here. Um, so let's just wrap it up real quick. We do have a programming note, Tim. And yeah. it's been a while. It's been a while since we've had to delay a live show. Yes. But the August live show will be delayed. Boo. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's my fault. Um, I have. I am not going to be available for the next date. So the August live show, episode 78, will take place on the second Thursday, August 10th, at 5.30 p.m. Central due to scheduling conflicts. So the first Thursday night of almost every month, Tim. Right. Uh, so come back and join us on August 10th, 2020. 23, and I'll put a reminder out there on uh, the 3rd, Tim, which is supposed to be the first Thursday, mm -hmm. to let you guys know there will not be a live show. It'll be on the second Thursday this this month because I will not be available. Tim was here, but I am not. So, and you know, um, it's getting close to the end of school, Tim. We're trying to get some travel in and things like, or beginning of school, excuse me. And so we're trying to get some travel in and stuff while the summer's still here. Like you mentioned, summer's like halfway over. Yeah. So let's get some, like I get my travel in, you know? So, oh, Angelina's here, and she says Tim is the sexiest man alive. So <laughs> oh, there you Lord. go. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> we funny. got some. We have some spam going on. There you go. I, I, well, you never know. Hey. Yeah. Never know. Um, so there you go, guys. August live show, seventy-eight second Thursday regular time though. Second Thursday regular time. And then, of course, we always want to remind you guys that we ha we are always looking for your arcade-related videos. If you want some free advertising for your YouTube channel, we're looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes less, about arcade-related topics. Please send us a link to your video, questions at arcaderepairtips.com, and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during our one of our live show episodes. Make sure you put a plug in for your channel so people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. And Tim, we always open this up because we know there's a lot of people out there who have arcade-related channels that may be just on the verge of being monetized. And so we want to help you guys out. If we can push a little bit of our audience over to y'all, we would love to do that. Okay. Now, Tim, I'm going to go ahead and come back here because I see a lot of activity here in the live chat. I just want to make sure we're not missing anything. Uh, Rexer Show says, having a pinball show on Sunday night. That's pretty cool. So you guys check that out. Um, Rexer Show, that's a channel you guys should be watching. He's got some great stuff over there, so make sure you're watching that. Uh, we had uh, Delusional here earlier, Tim. Delusional's mm -hmm. channel is very good. Uh, people, Tim, we'll say it. I've said it before. Say it again. People are always like, why don't you guys put out more content? And I would say there's so much good content out there already. You can check out some of these other channels. There's good stuff out there, okay? We're going to... Me and Tim have very limited schedules. Mm -hmm. We're lucky we can even do one show a month. So, right. <laughs> um, but... Um, guys like uh, Regzer Show and Delusional um, are putting out really great content that you should be checking out. And so if you're not watching us, we hope you will watch some of the other great YouTube channels that talk about arcade-related topics. So uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Uh, oh, you see, Joe, Joe is here. He says, cheers, guys, came in super late. He's an HVAC tech, Tim. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were already talking about that earlier. So you're the one making all the money. <laughs> all right. So there you He's go. He's definitely busy this time of year, Absolutely. So... Um, okay, so let me go ahead and put the contact information up here, Tim, for everybody so we can go ahead and get that out of the way. We do want to remind you that if you want to get in contact with us, the best way is through our email address at questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Send us an email there, and if you put live show on the subject, you'll get a mention on the show. That's typically how it works. Or we do hold back questions for the live show uh, if we want to cover them. So again, uh, send, a, send your email to questions at arcaderepairtips.com, and we will get back to you one way or another. Uh, and Tim, if you don't hear back from us and you send an email there send it again because we do have a pretty aggressive spam filter we mm -hmm. have to because there's a lot of email that comes through there so um it may have gotten caught up in spam if you don't if you don't get a reply from us and you're still looking for a reply send us another email and let us know so that way we can cover it on the next show uh razor show says no prize drawings guys i don't have anything here um if i had something to give away i would give it away um tim do you have anything to give away um I don't have anything. Hold on. We oh, got, okay. We, we, we got something. Oh, you have something? Well, because... Oh, uh, we'll keep that. 
Yeah. We'll keep that for later. You need to keep that. I have it. Oh, okay. I have one like it. Oh, okay. But it, shirts are hard because of size. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, true. you never know what size it is. Tim, Tim has a shirt, a brand new one that he wants to give away. But the thing is, is that yeah, I never know sizes size. are always weird. So um, we will we will not have a prize drawing this month. I'm sorry. Everybody's so sad. Uh, <laughs> we will do it again next month, uh, especially since we're having to delay a week, Tim. Yeah. So we will have a prize drawing. We'll and it'll be one. something good. Maybe Thanks it'll be something. Asking. Yeah, maybe I'm going on a trip. Maybe it'll be something from my trip. Tim's going on a trip. Maybe it'll be something from his I trip. Am, we'll figure so. out something. So uh, two prizes on the next show is what the regs are showing. Okay. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, guys, we have our YouTube channel at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. Of course, all of these great people here in the live chat know where to find us on YouTube. But if you don't, and maybe you're listening to this on the question and answer podcast feed, the audio feed, you can go to youtube.arcaderepairtips.com to hear and see the video from this episode. And Tim, remember, we don't put the after show on the audio feed. And so if you're listening to this on the audio feed and you want to check out the after show, make sure you go to youtube.arcaderepairtips.com, look up episode 77, and do that at that time. And then, Tim, we do have the podcast feed. So, again, if you just want to listen to the audio feed from our question and answer podcast or you want to hear some of our interviews, some of our question, uh, some of our other podcasts, question and answer podcast, whenever Eric and Rusty ever decide to do that again, mm-hmm. they are on our podcast feed. And you can find that at iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com for iTunes. Uh, for our iTunes users, we have our Spotify page at Spotify.ArcadeRepairTips.com for our Spotify users. And, Tim, I got a message from Stitcher which is owned by SiriusXM, that Stitcher Radio is shutting down. Ah. And we have directed you guys to Stitcher for years. Mm-hmm. And Stitcher is a very good platform, but SiriusXM bought it, and I think they're done with it. And hmm. so they are going to be shutting it down. You can still find us on Stitcher at stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com, but not for long, because I think it's going to shut down within the next month or two. Well. So um, find us on Spotify, find us on iTunes, or find us wherever fine podcast or aggregated, Tim. That could be in your favorite pod catcher, whatever it is. If you use, uh, I use Pocket Cast, Tim, that's my favorite, but maybe you use something else. If you search for Arcade Repair, you'll probably find us. So there you go. And then we have our social media feeds. We have our Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. We want to thank Mark for all of his wonderful contributions to our content. Mark, a community manager, he does a great job with that. And he does all that on Facebook at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. We also have our Twitter feed at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. Tim, we haven't joined any of the other um, Twitter alternatives yet. Blue Sky or what's the, right. one, what's the new one with Instagram? Threads. Threads. We haven't. No, we're not on Threads. Um, until another one gets enough users to be important, we're going to stick where we are. So we're on Facebook at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com or our Twitter feed at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. We highly encourage you to sign up for one or the other or both. And that's where we post all the great news stories that we cover here on the live show. We have lots of great discussion on those. And Tim, I do think I got the cross-posting working between the Facebook page and the Twitter feed again okay. uh, for a reasonable amount of money. Um, it's not perfect, but it works. And mm-hmm. it keeps me from having to post again on Twitter. So um, it is working. So if something gets posted on the Facebook page, you should see it on the Twitter feed as well. So there you go. So again, Facebook, Twitter, find us, subscribe, do your thing. And we should also remind you that if uh, you feel so inclined to uh, give us five stars, go to the iTunes page at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com and do that. Because uh, that always helps us. You know, it helps our reach a little bit, right, Tim? Yeah. Helps us get uh, more eyeballs on the podcast. So there we go. Okay, Tim, well, I think we're, this about wraps it up for this episode. I want to go back to the live chat real quick just to see if we have anything else. Uh, let's see. Um, Joe says, when the ladies are hot, call me to fix their HVAC. Right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, there you go. Yeah, and we have, I mean, we've given away prizes in the past. It's just that I didn't even plan this month. I don't know. I've got, like, a whole prize bin over there I just need to dig stuff out of. Mm. So, um, and, Tim, I got the coolest email, and I don't know if I can bring it up real quick, uh, from one of our winners this month. And I wrote him back, too. Let me see if I can find it real quick. We, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Too many emails from Dan. So Dan uh, wrote an email saying, "Hi Jonathan, I was reminded uh, I was reminded of this last month on, on June 11th. Not too many weeks after receiving this handheld Pac-Man keychain, Simon was proud to hit the max score of nine ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine on this Pac-Man." And he gave me a photo of basically, it looked like his son, Tim, uh, the Pac-Man keychain that we gave away. He mm-hmm. actually rolled it to the, the high score. Wow. So uh, congratulations. Mm-hmm. Cool email. I love getting that stuff. So it just shows you, Tim, people mm-hmm. win. Mm-hmm. Here, we do give away prizes. And uh, and so we just didn't give away one this month. <coughs> so there you go. Hopefully that's not the only reason you're watching. Right. If you are, I'm sorry. So mm-hmm. there you go. 
Uh, Tim, I think we're about ready to wrap this up. Let's talk about the after show. What do we got for the after show? Well, I imagine we're going to talk about a little bit of sports. We got a pretty good baseball team this year that we, we like to brag on. All-Star game's coming up. Uh, the All-Star game is coming up. We'll Independence about- Day. We'll talk about Independence Day. I'll give you a little bit more details on what went on. Tim will, too. On ours, we'll talk about uh, NBA drafts. You keep up with any of that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, And we'll talk about some movies we've seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tim, what's something, give them one or two that you want to talk about here. Uh, in the in the after show, um, I saw the Sound of Freedom at the movies. Uh, that's been a popular Jim Independence Cavizzo, Day. Right? Uh, very good movie and uh, movie. A show that I'm really liking right now is the Crowded Room. If you haven't seen that on Apple TV, we'll talk about that and some other stuff we've seen. Lately. So, and I watched uh, Big George Foreman, Tim. Oh, and which good. I'm going to talk about Blackberry as well. I've seen both of those, and we're also going to talk about Muscles and Mayhem, which is the uh, American Gladiators documentary. We can really talk good, about yeah. that. So, um, if we'd love for you guys to stay in the after show, of course, the after show is just like this show, except any topic goes and so we'll be talking about tv shows movies events and la- also talk about tim that um i became a concert promoter overnight last time mm-hmm. we'll talk about how that concert went so it'll be very interesting if you want to hear about that so but other than that guys we hope that you have a great rest of your july we look forward to seeing you back here on august 10th 10th wow. second thursday of the month at 5 30 p.m central time for our next live show and until then we want to say that we hope you have a great july and remember here at arcade repair tips when you fix the game we play the game take care everybody and we'll see you in the after show or we'll see you next month Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production. And we're back with the after show for episode 77, Tim. Uh, yeah. How did the regular show go? I think so. A little, little quick. A little, little shorter maybe tonight, but that gives us a little more time in the after show. 
Um, we didn't have a whole lot of questions. The questions were kind of lacking this month, Tim. Yeah, now, okay. here's the thing. We've already had like three come in for next month or something like that that I'm going to try to hold back. And so, uh, you know, it becomes an ebbs and flow. Sometimes we get more questions. Sometimes we get less. It just kind of depends. Right now, it's really busy, I think, for people, uh, vacations and things, summertime mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, Tim did forget to mention that we are going to be opening more cards tonight, correct? Yeah, I kind of got... So, one thing I mentioned is that uh, uh, I was at two Walgreens today, and so I picked up... I told you guys about this. I did not know what this was the first time I ever bought some. And I did a little research on it. And uh, it's by the Fairfield Company. And we're going to open one of these. It's a, basically like a pack. And this is well, this was uh, $5.29 for this. It. And I want to show you guys how cool I think these are when you buy them at Walgreens. It's exclusive, I think. And I also got a new shirt. Uh, this I got one for Tim to repair yeah. technology through the ages. I like this. And now over like here, it's seventies. It says give it, give it a, a good, solid, solid whack. whack. And then um, the eighties just, just blow on it. And the nineties, <laughs> turn, uh, it, turn off it, it off and on again. Yeah. So um, I, I just I saw this and I couldn't I can help myself bought one for Tim too. And then I got Tim this new one that's uh, one button to rule them all. Nice mm-hmm. Atari joystick there. I, I just like the shirt. I think yep. it's cool looking. So, uh, but we were rocking some new shirts, which is always good. Um, trying to stay cool around here is the mm-hmm. biggest thing probably. But uh, Tim, how was your June? Let's get into that. Well, June was busy month. Uh, like I said, took the trip to South Dakota and it was uh, pre- pretty pretty warm up there. So I didn't get any pictures. So I guess you didn't go to any like barcades or anything while you were there. Wait a second. When I was in South Dakota, I went to that's when with the tornado that had been hit by the tornado. Did I send you some pictures? Of maybe that? you did. I don't know. Maybe I think I did. Oh, uh, maybe you did. And I didn't put them up here. That's my bad. Let me look. We'll save them for the next show. That's right. Or you're gonna bring me back some other ones from uh, from Hollywood, right? Yeah, went to a couple places in South Dakota. But anyway, had that trip. Uh, that was good. It was a little warmer up there than I thought it would be. Uh, other than that, it just kind of flew by. Everything was, here it was, 4th of July already. Um, normally, um, we have all the kids over, we'd shoot a few fireworks. I was planning on grilling hamburgers and hot dogs, and all the kids bailed on us. Everybody 30 and You did up, send them to me, I'm sorry. Everybody 30 and under uh, ditched us. <laughs> and they were, actually, uh, my daughter lives in a town about 40 miles from here and they were having a big parade and fireworks and they were really encouraging the local community and that's where she lives and a lot of their friends so she wanted to of course she borrowed our chairs she borrowed my fan she borrowed everything with it and they took it and went so it was just six adults uh us my wife me grandparents and her sister and her boyfriend so the six of us so i thought why are we cooking hamburgers we were having steak. Yeah. So we had we grilled steaks, and uh, we just set the lawn chairs out and watched the neighbors shoot fireworks. Hey, that worked. And uh, saved our money, but we had a good time. So what about you guys? You said you were just kind of relaxing that day? Yeah, so um, first things first here. Um, Razor Show says, where do we get the shirts? Um, most of the shirts come from Woot.com, which is an Amazon company, as you guys know. So W-O-O-T.com. Their um, main corporate office is in Texas, and I've actually driven by it before. Nice. So, but uh, they got bought by Amazon, but they still function kind of independently of them somewhat. But uh, Woot, we like Woot. So um, let's talk about June for me. So June was like the busiest month ever. Um, Mm -hmm. My wife, as a lot of you guys have probably heard me talk, she's a children's minister. And we have VBS uh, typically during this time. And VBS at our church is like a big deal. Mm -hmm. We go all out. And so, uh, you know, it was a lot of weeks and weekend days just spent kind of getting ready for that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, we had the concert. I'll talk about that here in a second. And for Independence Day, we were just so beat up and, you know, just so tired. Uh, We slept in, which I haven't done in a long time. And then we went to my parents' house. They cooked out. And Mm -hmm. we took one of our big inflatable slides over there in the kids' room. Oh, okay. So we have a couple of those. It's really good. So, yeah, I mean, it was fun. um, But didn't usually we do fireworks. Usually Mm -hmm. we do a parade. We have a neighborhood parade up here. We do fireworks and decided we ain't doing any of that. We're so tired, you know, so... Uh, the thing about fireworks is that they're great, except for you have to stay up late and your kids get grumpy. Right. And so, I mean, you know, our kids are typically in bed by nine, mm-hmm. and like nine is when it gets dark, right? Right. And so, when it, the fireworks really start. Exactly. You can't start fireworks till like nine or nine thirty. So, you know how it is. And yeah, but anyway, um, yeah. So that's there. You go. So that's kind of the thing. My June was good. It was busy. I'm kind of glad it's over. Kind of sad it's over too. 
Yeah. That's a lot of fun stuff. But um, uh, other summer plans. Tim mentioned he's going to Hollywood, Florida. I'm going to Canada. I've got family up there pretty soon. And so looking forward to that. And, you know, I mean, as far as that stuff goes. And then before you know it, Tim, It'll back to some, school. Right. <laughs> so it's going to be real close. Uh, let's see. Joe, you see the SD Governor commercials. She is hilarious. Have you seen, did you see any of those while you were in? I Sam? did not see any okay. of those. So I'll have to, have to go. Have, yeah, I'll have to uh, look into that. I didn't watch much TV. I didn't have a lot of time when I was there, uh, but I did meet some really good folks, and I went to. Um, oh, now, 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 my my mind's going blank. But where the um, it, they called it like Jesse James hired out some gulch that he supposedly jumped. Uh, the tradition is he jumped it on a horse getting away. I went and saw some stuff. So very, very beautiful territory. And very friendly people had a good good trip. I can't believe I forgot those pictures. You did send them to I me. I sent them. It's been crazy. Yeah, it's, it's been, been crazy. Lot. So it is. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get them next them month sometime. or something yeah. like that. Um, we can talk some investment, Tim, but I haven't really been investing in anything. I have been encouraged to see the stocks have been going back up a little a bit. A little bit. So it's good to see that. But um, overall, I haven't really been keeping up with any of that. Have you been? Not much at all. I bought some gold a while back, and it's already paid off. Uh, still kind of investing in uh, gold and silver right now. The, uh, the only hedging thing, against my inflation. I was about inflation. to say, the only thing, I, I think I mentioned this before, though, is that if you don't have a savings account that's yielding at least 5%, you need to find a savings account that's yielding at least 5% mm-hmm. interest because they're out there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, at least put your money in something like that if you're not going to put it in something else. So, um, But now's a good time for that because um, interest rates are high. Make that interest rate work for you. If you're mm-hmm. buying a house right now, I'm sorry. Because so, right. <laughs> I think yeah, it's seven a, right now. It's amazing because we looked at selling our house because we could make this big profit on it. But then you consider what we would do with that money to buy another one at the interest rate we'd get right now. We'd pay more than we're paying for a month for a smaller house. Yep. And so we're just kind of stuck where we are. Yeah, and us too. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, let's talk about uh, Major League Baseball real quick. Just real quick, guys. Uh, big Rangers fans here. They're doing really good. Um, over the last, like, 25 games, not doing so hot. I think we're 10 yeah. and 15. Um, but we started off so hot, I don't really have any complaints. And we always limp into the All-Star break anyway. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how good the team is. We suck right before the All-Star it's break. Every like that. Yeah. We need the break. Exactly. So we're ready for the break. Um, but we made some trades. We mm-hmm. got um, our oldest Chapman, Tim. I don't know if you yes, saw that. So I that was a big that. trade that the Texas Rangers made. Need and then we have the All-Star game coming up. And several Rangers are starters. There's four Rangers four, starters. Four yes. Rangers. Mm-hmm. So, um, which is really cool. And they're, I'm mm-hmm. glad to see that. And then um, Adol- Adolis Garcia... It's going to be in the Home Run Derby. Yes. Which is awesome. So, um, really good stuff. So is, uh, what's his name from Cincinnati, the new guy, the uh, Eli or Ellis or... I know what you're talking about. Yeah, brand new name. guy. He's yeah. only been playing like 25 games. He, he's a big home run hitter. Just, he's fun to watch. Yeah. Really exciting player. I love the All-Star game. Oh, um, Mr. Dwayne 79, how about those Reds? You see, now you were down, you were talking Man, about how bad the, the Reds, Reds were. The Reds have been The fire. Reds have been awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Like, hey, they, they swept us. They swept the freaking Astros. They did. So, I mean, man, how about those Reds? You see? Yeah. You never know. That's the cool thing about baseball, Tim. It's a yeah, long you season. You just never know. It's a long season. So, um, but no, the Reds are looking awesome. They are. Uh, and we're looking good. Um, not as good as we looked last month, but we're still looking good. So, um, who's your rookie player? I can't think of his name. I just know, uh, I, you know, the one that, for the Reds, that's who he plays for. Oh, oh he's, oh, he's oh, Cruz is what Cruz. he says. Yeah, man. He's just awesome. There you yeah. Go. So, um, yeah, there's, I mean, fun to watch. Exactly. And that's the thing about baseball. If you haven't been watching games with the, um, with the new rules, it's fun mm-hmm. to watch games again. Yeah. They're fast. Golly, the games fly by now because, you know, the pitchers can't take forever throwing the ball. The hitters can't adjust their batting gloves 15 times. And so it makes the game go really fit quickly. And I enjoy it. I was watching a clip of an old baseball game. I think it was like when Kirk Gibson hit a home run in the World Series. Right. And that was like 20 minutes for that one at bat. Oh, I know. I was just like, he kept fouling him off. And I was like, man, it just, and then he would step out of the box and stretch. And then the pitcher would call, and it took forever. I was like, oh, now, you're I still gonna, I think when we get to the postseason, you're still going to have that. Yeah, Because those, so. I think they're going to relax some of those rules. And I hope they do, because I want postseason baseball to last forever. Yeah. Like, I want those games mm-hmm. to last a long time, because it makes it exciting, right? Um, but for the regular season, man, we're churning through these things like nothing. So, I mean, it's awesome. Uh, really excited about that. But um, excited for the All-Star break. I think our guys need it. And just looking forward to a great All-Star game. Uh, I like to watch the Futures game, Tim, because you get to see a lot of the new guys coming up. So if you don't watch the Futures game, you should. And then uh, Home Run Derby, I actually enjoy. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoy the format of the new Home Run Derby. It works for me. 
So, um, NBA draft, Tim. What did you think? Did you see what the Mavs did? I did. So we uh-huh. had the 10th pick. We traded down right. to the 12th. And we got rid of, um, what's his name? That was a big salary dump. Yeah. I can't think of his name at the moment. Bertans. And then, um, and then we picked up a good center, it looked like. Yes, we and did. So, and then a 3 and D guy. A really good 3 and D guy with our se- with our second pick. And, so, and Steph Curry's brother. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're really, I mean, we're really trying <laughs> Poor to. Poor guy. Yeah, he's always his brother. Yeah. But he's a pretty good player. And it looks like we're going to re-sign shooter. Kyrie, if we haven't already. Yeah, I think, we did. Yeah, oh, we did, did we? Okay, I wasn't sure. I know that there's a lot of rumors about it, but I hadn't heard official yet. I think it's official. Yeah, so if it's official, that's good. So, I mean, I think the Mavericks are in a good spot. Again, we're we're Dallas team fans typically, so um, you know I'm looking forward to a um, Mavs season. When the it comes number back one around. overall draft pick, kid looks pretty good. I'm, I'm telling like, you, he may be the best pretty, player that we've seen exciting, in a while. Yeah. San Antonio, man, how do they yeah. cash in on those things? I tell you what, they did good. So uh, it'll be it'll be fun to see him on the court. So mm-hmm. uh, looking forward to that. Um, before I get to the concert stuff, I'll save that till the end. I think, okay. Tim. So let's talk about um, movies and TV shows. Now, you mentioned in the workup The Sound of Freedom, which is Jim Caviezel, right? Yes. Now, I am I know the concept of the movie, but just give us a little synopsis for those. Okay. So what happens is he is working for Homeland Security. Okay. And they bust a lot of people for doing uh, with child pornography. Okay. But it's the end user that he's busting. The person that has it at their house not the guy's shouldn't creating have it. it. Not the guy creating it. And he is just like, I'm tired of doing, I'm tired of, because he has to look at it in evidence and stuff. And he's just like, I'm tired of this job. I want to go after the big guy. I want to go after somebody. And he ends up rescuing a little boy. And when he does, he says, you know, uh, the little boy says, please go get my sister. And so he does a little research. A little boy and his sister were both abducted. So he tells his boss, basically, I need to go down to, I think it's Honduras or Guatemala or somewhere. He says, I want to go and get her. And he goes, you can't go in there and save just one little girl. And he go, and the guy's like, yes, I can. And I will. And he does. He goes all the way into the jungles and like tracks this girl down and saves her. Everybody knows that this Take doesn't spoil it. He's going to, but... Everything. Let me. I'll just say this much: uh, they handle the subject matter very well, but it is tough to watch because that's what it's about, and it tries to raise awareness. And at the end of the movie, it says there's going to be a special message, and he said that he hoped that the movie made two million dollars opening week uh, because there were two, there were literally supposedly two million kid two million kids that are involved in the slave trade. And he, wow. He gives us statistics. He says, think about it. if you sell cocaine or something that gets used, they can spend uh, that kind of money and buy a child, and that child can get used five or six times a day for up to 10 to 15 years. Mm. Years, every day. Mm. And so the money is what the people, and, and, and there's even the women that are involved in it that were helping to get the kids. It just, oh, it'll make you just want to fight somebody. And uh, you know that the bad guys are going to get it in the end, so you're really waiting for that part. But it handles a de- delicate subject matter that we, that I think, for five years they tried to get the movie made, and a lot of people didn't touch it because of the subject matter and the things. But you know what? We need to be real, and if this is going on, it needs to stop. In fact, one of the hashtags you'll see: uh, "God's children are not for sale." And uh, so, a good movie, you need to support it. By the way, it made ten million dollars. I, I thought I, the last total I saw said fourteen. Yeah, in like the first day pre- previews, right? Made before it actually was in all the theater. It made ten million dollars, right? So that made uh, the weekend total. I it saw. is a pay it forward movie by Angel Studios. Pr- promotes it. So if you're familiar with them and the Chosen, you know how it works. If you don't have the money, you can go on there and watch it. You can go to the theater and see it for free. Right. Doesn't cost you anything. Mm-hmm. So anyway, a good movie to go watch. Um, like I said, if you kind of want, uh, and it's not, um, uh, it's, it's it's got some action in it. It's got the story. Uh, I mean, there'll be times if you don't cry, something's wrong with you. I mean, there's, there's some definitely tugs on the heartstrings, but it also is a it's a movie about a real hero. I mean, a guy like Rambo that just went in there. Uh, at one point, they wanted to give him a gun, and he says, "No, I don't. I, if I have a gun, they're going to automatically know I'm back. You know, they're I'll get shot." Um, he he does things like he pretends to be a doctor, and he goes in there and he learns kind of doctor lingo and stuff, and all the he does different things 
to do this and ends up saving several hundred children. There's a, a line, I think, in the previews where they said, you can't go and save one, one child. And he says, I'm not. I'm going to save all of them. And he, he literally does. And so, great movie. Can't say enough about it. Um, if you don't watch it now, when it comes out, by all means, uh, rent it. Uh, support the cause. And, uh, you know, we need to be aware. And, and, and there's a, a lot of stuff that goes on even in our own area. Uh, so, be careful with your kids and, and your wives and people like that. Little boys, things like that. Uh, this movie exposes a lot of that. That I think has been kind of swept under the rug for a long time and uh, it needs to be exposed. Um, so that was a good movie that I saw. That's the only one I went to the theater to see. Uh, there are a couple others, uh, John, that I, I like. Did you get a chance to watch Flamin' Hot yet? I have not. I've seen the, the trailer for it. It looks really good. It, so. I, I, I told you, uh, what's the Will Smith movie with the Ruby? Pursuit Steve? of Happiness. Pursuit of Happiness. We've always been big fans of Pursuit of Happiness. Every time I watch Pursuit of Happiness, I want to I want to start a business sure. or something. It's one of those movies. This is the same way. It's that kind of movie. Uh, since then, I've heard a lot that says it might have been embellished a little bit. A lot of people say this guy's quite a story teller you can't quite believe everything that's in there but it makes for a good story and it is a fun story to tell how that uh, basically uh, a janitor uh, working for Lay's saves the whole company by coming up with flaming hot flavors for Cheetos and different flavors and um, and so that's a good movie to watch that's also. on Hulu too so you it's don't have to, Hulu. Go, yeah, as I say, you don't right. to go anywhere for that um, you watched the How to Create a Sex Scandal I Saw which is uh, took place in Mineola right? Yes uh, if you if you've watched this, I believe it's on HBO. Well, it's Max now. Yeah, Max. Uh, How to Create a Sex Scandal um, is a really good documentary about a town that's really close to Tyler. In fact, you'll see a lot of scenes where we live in Tyler, and they're going to talk about uh, the Justice Department here in Smith County and versus Wood County and uh, a lot of things that happened uh, during uh, not too long ago in the two, early 2000s. Um, and so that I'll just leave that up to you guys. Uh, it's very good to watch. And um, I was one of those people that thought that that all these people were just they had to be guilty. And this one will really make you think. Uh, okay. Maybe maybe there's a way to create a sex scandal it might not necessarily be one. Okay. Okay. And then uh, burden of proof I had on here for you. Okay. Now I'm kind of trying to remember what burden of proof was because I watched it, but now I that's forgot the one it. about the guy whose sister dies and um, he thinks the parents did it or something like that. Okay. Right. I'm not. I, I've only heard things. I okay. Don't know. I can't quite remember. It must not have been that as memorable as I thought, but my memory's getting bad too. So I don't quite remember. I do remember Burden of Proof some. What I'm really enjoying is the crowded room. Okay, yeah, and you mentioned that one yeah. when we were in the room. The crowded room is one, it's set in the 70s, and it's about a guy, and um, I think it's Dakota Fanning is, the, is starring in it, and uh, she is um, interviewing this guy. It's kind of where the police in the 70s are discovering uh, people that may have split personalities. Like, are they really guilty if that person doesn't know what they did? Right. It, do they need to be in jail for the rest of their lives or maybe in a mental institution so they can get some help? It's kind of a really good twist on that. Um, greater was the last one I had. Okay. Prime Video. Yeah, Greater. Now, I will never forget that movie. That was a great, great, great movie. If you like sports, if you like underdog stories, uh, in fact, if you like the underdog, is it called Underdog with about Kurt Warner? Yes. This reminds me of that a little bit. It's a great story about a guy that um, plays, uh, walks on, and becomes the best, um, one of the best def uh, offensive linemen in uh, college history. And, um, and, and we, but he walks on the team and shows how that over a couple years, how good he becomes. Nice. And it's a very good story. Um, anyway, if you haven't seen that, that's a uh, that's probably out of everything. Uh, John, if you haven't watched any of this, out of everything, watch that movie. Okay. That Greater. is a good one. Greater is the name of it. A Big D Retro Chimes in Robotron Sound Fix. One of the connections was one pin off. Yay. Yay. Wow, Congratulations. way to go. That, it happens, right? Yeah. Exactly, that's what we talked about, connection, right? That's yeah. what we said. I mean, same kind of thing. you got to be careful with those. So... Thank uh, you for that update. That's cool. Absolutely. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the stuff I've watched. I watched Blackberry, Tim. Right, which is, which the is story about of Blackberry. documentary of the Blackberry, right? Uh, 
docudrama, right? Doc- like, not okay. really a documentary. It's more of a movie. Okay. And it's got good actors in it. Um, two guys that you know. Um, one of the guys from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And okay. the other guy from, like, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I can't even think. <laughs> He's in a whole... And he does the voice of uh, the kid on How to Train Your Dragon. But, um, okay. So, I'm really good at actors in it. And it was good. And the okay. story is really good. Um, if you, And, of course, once the iPhone comes along... Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of when BlackBerry goes away, but it kind of leads you up to how BlackBerry got so big, right? Right. And that's a really interesting story. So if you're interested in tech stuff, history stuff, everything I watched was all historical, like, dramatizations mm-hmm. and things, I feel like. So um, that's what I've been watching. So BlackBerry's definitely that. I watched Spinning Gold, which is about a producer who produced um, Kiss and a whole bunch of other bands that you'd be familiar with. Um and it's kind of a it's kind of written by his son and it kind of tells a very ultra positive view of him i can't remember his name at the moment but it's basically about this producer who goes off to start his own record company and mm-hmm. then he does and he brings all these artists over like say so he signs kiss when nobody really knew who they were and um it's it's interesting and it's a good story but i don't know it's a so-so movie i don't know if i'd spend time on it but that's okay. called spinning gold uh it was okay um, the one that I think you should watch out of these three is the one I'm going to mention next, and that's Big George Foreman. Okay. Okay, so I did not know all of George Foreman's stories, and most of you, uh, story, most of you know The Grill. <laughs> right. <laughs> you ain't know anything. George Foreman was a big, bad, scary dude, though. I do remember that, like, when uh, he first started boxing, he came on the scene, man. He was, when he had hair. Yeah, when he, he had was, hair. Uh, yeah, he was Ooh. a mean dude. Yeah. Right. And, and then... Um, but really, um, he grew up in a very religious house. And yeah. so, Tim, this is a faith movie. Uh-huh. Okay, this really is. And and so he grows up in this house where he's dirt poor, but his mama is always giving thanks to God, right? And it just never hits him. Never hits him. And so he grows up tough on the streets of Houston, okay? Yeah. And... Um, and gets in and just doesn't know what to do with his life. And so he signs up for this job core. He signs up for the job core. You know what the job core is? Where uh-huh. like you go in, they train you how to do, uh, you know, like, they train you how to do job certain skills. work. Yeah, job skills. And so, well, um, they say, like, if you get in fights or something so many times, you get kicked out. Well, guess mm-hmm. what he did? He got in fights and fights. got kicked out. Mm-hmm. And so um, the little, his little job, one of the little instructors at the job core, though, sees him and is like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a chance. I'm going to teach you how to box. And the, the job core instructor was like a former, like, Kind of um, semi-pro, mm-hmm. semi-pro boxer, okay? So he brings him up, starts tra- training him out of box, and before you know it, big George Foreman's there, and mm-hmm. he's going after these guys. He's only like 19, mm-hmm. okay? So he starts just going in there and pounding guys, right? Like taking them out. Well, he loses, okay? Mm-hmm. And the night that he loses, I mean, it's kind of like everything went downhill. He has another fight, and he loses, and it starts getting away from him. Well, he has a fight, he loses, and he passes out. Because like he just like it's it's like his heart rate and his his heart rate just dropped, mm-hmm. and literally he ends up on the ground. He has a vision, mm-hmm. like that like of God basically. Wakes up and it's like I'm devoting my entire life to God. I'm becoming a preacher, and does <laughs> that. Okay, uh-huh. does that. Okay. Now he's got a lot of money from uh, from boxing, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he in starts a gym in Houston, mm-hmm. you know, to help kids, you know, who are in in like the inner city who are mm-hmm. having a hard time and everything like this. Well. Um, he mismanages his money. In the movie, they show somebody else, like a, a third party, that a, a guy that he knew from the job corps Kinda mismanages his mo- money and, and misuses him. And he's been putting a lot of his money into this little youth center. Well, he can't keep the youth center open if he doesn't have the money. Okay, well, guess what? At this point in his life, he's like he's like 30-something, he's fat, and he's bald. Mm-hmm. Okay? But he's like, you know what? And, and he prays a lot. And him and his wife have this vision that he should go back to boxing. Mm-hmm. And do you know the story about Big George Foreman going in there all heavy set, knocking yeah. out dudes, right? right? I mean, I mean, and so that's kind of where it ends. But he, during that whole time, like he stops boxing and becomes a pastor and mm-hmm. has a church. And even today, he still preaches. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize this, Tim. I didn't realize he was a preacher. But uh, it's a wonderful story because it's like he goes back that second time when he's going back to fight. I remember seeing him because I, I was about that age when mm-hmm. he came back thinking, who is this guy? Right. But the reason Ball why he got bowl. so popular, <laughs> yeah, and he won the belt. The reason he got so popular is because he looked like you and me. He yeah. didn't look like a boxer like right. he did when he was mm-hmm. young. He looked like a big fat guy right. who had he no hair in his head, and he was going in there I beating beat them dudes up. Exactly, but you know what? It's because his skill. Because he, st- the thing about George was that he hit hard. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't have to be fast. When he hit you, it hit you like a truck. Mm-hmm. Okay, his his technique was not great, but dude, if he connected, you were going down. Right, and even later, like I said, even when he was in his late thirties, early forties, he still had that same power, and so that's how he's able to beat these dudes. These young guys would just beat him up with like these little punches, and he may not always connect, but boy, if he connected, you hurt, you hurting the yeah. guy, right? 
And so um, it was a wonderful story, though. He gets the money after he gets all that money, and it's way more than what he thought it was going to be. Mm. Like, because he got the royalties from HBO and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. he gets this royalty check, and he's like, good Lord. Right. And so he's able to support his church and keep the rec center open and everything like that. It's just, it's a good movie. Yeah. And okay, it tells good. a good story. Looking, so like and, and at the end, uh, or I saw an interview with him, and, um, you know, like, you know, somebody said, you know, your face is is in this movie a lot. And he's like, well, I wouldn't make the movie if it wasn't if it my my faith in it. You know, he's like, that's yeah. like one of the biggest parts of me. And then I've I've also and of course he he sold the freaking grills. Right. He sold the company like his share of the company that made the grills for like oodles. And yeah, so, like, you know, I heard he made time. more money oh, off yeah. the grills than he did even boxing, which was a lot of money. It's exactly. like he just kept making money. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's just it's a wonderful mm-hmm. story about a guy just a. a kid a broke kid from the inner city who had nothing who worked his way up to become something i mean and mm-hmm. if you like those kind of rags to riches stories man you're gonna love that so and there's a lot of faith mixed in there too which i appreciate so uh tim i've been watching secret invasion on disney which is um a marvel mm-hmm. with um of course samuel L. jackson kind of telling the yeah. story it's been good so far it's okay we're watching how i met your father on hulu still uh, new seasons out uh Righteous Gemstones on Max. Have you watched any of that? I have saw just. A, I've, I've been wanting to see it. It's kind of on my watch. My to, to watch it is, list. It, I mean, it's Hilarious. basically like. I mean, it's just this family of televangelists that are yeah. just you know morons. I mean, <laughs> you know, but that's funny. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, the last thing here I have Tim are Muscles and Mayhem, the unauthorized story of American Gladiators. Now. I watched this one, and I watched the official one on ESPN, the official American Gladiators, um, okay. 30 for 30 on ESPN. I've watched oh, both of them. Okay, I haven't watched the 30 okay. for 30. The one on Netflix is better, okay? The 30 for 30 tells kind of how the creator came about creating the idea. It. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of the story about the creator and how it kind of came to be. This um, Muscles of Mayhem is about the gladiators and mm-hmm. kind of what they went through. And so you're getting kind of two different stories in each of these documentaries. The Netflix one is better, but both of them are really fascinating. Did you watch it when you were growing up? Absolutely. Me too. I, I was loved a huge it. fan. I loved it. It came on uh, Sundays when I came home from church, Tim. We would have that TV on watching American Gladiators. Yeah. So, um, yes, I loved American Gladiators. And I read um, Dan Clark's book, Nitro. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. If you haven't read that book, right. it is really good. Yeah, and really what I liked good. about it was it was... You know, it wasn't fake. Right. It wasn't like... No. It, they, and so when they went on tour, literally they were in a different town. They were beat up and sore and broken bones and they were still fighting. And these guys were fresh yeah. and they're wanting to beat them and stuff. And, you know, a lot of it you don't think about. They were literally wrestling, I mean, fighting every night. Yep. And it was just taking a toll on them. But, you know, but at the same time, they loved every minute of it. Yep. And they were really good friends. And some of them developed a really great friendship out of that. And it talks about the steroid use, a lot, about a lot of things. And if you've read Dan really Clark's good. book, he goes in depth. He talks about that a lot in the documentary, too. Yeah. But if you read his book, he goes in depth about... He goes to places now talking about not taking steroids. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the deal. If you're under doctor supervision and you're taking them, that's fine. But the problem is, is they weren't. Right. They were just taking them to get big. Right. And they weren't taking like what the doctor prescribed was or anything like that. They're just taking them as much and as often as they could. And if you do that, your body's going to react a certain way. Right. Okay. Doctors have ways of balancing that stuff out, making sure that you're even, that you don't take too much. You're not, you're not throwing your system off kilter by taking too much and things like that. And so, um, but yeah, they were just taking them like nonstop basically. Right. You know? They were cycling on all the time or, you know, so um, it's interesting though. And I, I liked it a lot. Um, it does repeat itself quite a bit. I mm-hmm. felt like, did you feel like that? A like a bit. lot of the content kind of got Got repeated in 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 it, but I love the show so much I couldn't help but watch the documentary. Me too. So, that was very and good. The, the one the thirty for thirty is really interesting too, and it's two parts and it's like four hours long or something like that. Okay. It's like it's like it's like two hours and two hours something like that. Um, but you have to have ESPN Plus to watch it. They don't aren't showing on regular ESPN, but it's just the American Gladiators documentary is what it is. But it goes into the creator guy and kind of how he got the idea, and he's kind you can kind of tell like. Um, in um, the Netflix one, they call him the Elvis impersonator. Yeah. You get to really know him, though, okay. through that documentary. So, I mean, they kind of brush him off like an Elvis impersonator in that one. In the origi- in the authorized one, you get his whole backstory. What's right crazy there. about the, it shows how they came up with some of the events. Yes. And the ones that didn't work. Right. And they're like, they're trying to throw people on the wall with Velcro suits. They don't stick. Right. And they're like, oh, what do we do? You know? Yeah. And uh, so there's some really good uh, things in there. But some of them... You know, that stuck. They were really tough and how they were really afraid of some of them were tough events, you know, that they're like, they know they're going to get hurt if they do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very tough guys. They were very, very proud of what they, when they, when they won. They were in the contenders. 
Uh, Which one is is it? um, Was it? Is it ice that still looks the same? Like one of them looks the same. Yeah, I think it was ice. Yeah. I was like, golly, she looks like she looks the same. Yeah, she looks she, like she hasn't even aged a day. And and like then you've got like Gemini over there who looks like he's gone through like heck and back. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, golly, some of these people like look the same. Dan, and, you can tell, yeah. has really worn down over yeah. time, you know. And it's like I and I, I like about Dan eighty Clark pounds lot. less. <laughs> yeah. Ever since his book. I read his book when it first came out and I followed him on social media ever since. That Nitro dude, was always my favorite. Yeah, he's one of the best ones. Yeah. I mean, if you were a kid and Nitro is who you wanted to be, you know what right. I'm saying? Like I like Thunder too. Now mm. they didn't go over what happened to Thunder and the Muscles and Mayhem. But if you watch the authorized, you'll see it. He was in. He was doing Hang Tough, mm-hmm. and he f- they did not inflate the mats enough, mm. and he fell. A contender fell on him. Hang Tough's the one where you have the rings and you got to yeah. wrap around. And they both fell, and the contender fell on him, and he literally broke like seven vertebrae in his back. Wow! And could not. I mean, had pain his entire life. Oh. Could barely walk. And died like two years ago. And mm. the authorized American Gladiators got to talk with him mm. and, and tell you about him. The Thunder was like one of the bigger ones. Golly, that dude yeah, it's huge. huge. Yeah. You know? um, but they don't really talk about Thunder much in the Netflix one. But if you want to see his story, watch the ESPN Plus one. So I will tell you that. Uh, let's do the cards real quick. All right. So uh, we teased a little bit about this earlier. I told you guys you can get these at Walgreens. What they are, or basically it says one in four contain a hit. So we're just going to open them, and we'll go. F- I'll just go from there. So what they are, they're loose cards. Uh, I have found autographs in them. There's always a pack of unopened something. It could be new. It and this was not. This is going to be. I mean, it could be old. This is going to be a new one. Uh, there's uh, a pack in there. I so the pack. there's always a pack, an unopened pack. So at five dollars and something, you get a pack of cards. These are artistry sage cards, is what this one is. I'm not even familiar with the brand. And so sage is kind of like um, if you were have your your Nike, Adidas, uh, those would be like Donruss and stuff. These would be Pumas. Oh, okay. You know, so <laughs> these are definitely the, the the but they always have uh, they they're really good about the newest rookie cards and some college players. So we'll save that for a minute. Uh, it will have cards going all the way back to the 70s. It may have autograph cards. Let's uh, you've got a lot of so, cards here. Let's just pull out the ones for players that people may have heard of. I don't want right. to go through, we'll like, go through all of quick. them. If there's anything, uh, if people I don't have heard know what of that people, is. that looks like uh, Nate Jerry from Philadelphia is what we got there. I don't know who else we got. Okay, anything. But see here goes. Here is a really good condition card. I can't tell what year it is, but it's Super Bowl. What is that? Nine. Uh, Super Bowl. Yeah, I think that's Super Bowl nine. P- Pittsburgh sixteen, Minnesota six. And the year on this is 1984, Tim. This is a Fleer card from 1984, and it's just a Super Bowl card. I mean, that's all it is. All right, here's right. a couple rookie cards. Um, different. Oh, they're all different brands. There'll be score cards. There'll be upper deck cards. I don't recognize some yeah, of these about guys. To say, we'll try to see if we can find people that we know. I do like the the design. Of, this is a pinnacle card. I do like the design design of that though. And this is Derek Holmes, Tim. Okay. Uh, but I do like the and on the, this is a double sided card. Yeah, look at that. So on the other side, it's got like this little kind of reflection. Kind All of right. Thing. So this guy I definitely heard of. This was before Patrick Mahomes. You had Steve DeBerg. Yeah, Steve mm-hmm. DeBerg from Kansas City. And then uh, Texas uh, receiver. That's an upper deck card. Oh yeah, Eric Metcalf. Let's see who else we got upper here. Deck. Don't know them. Yeah. Don't know them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know him. Yeah. We got another rookie card. I have heard of this guy. There's Rob Johnson. Oh, there rookie. You go, Rob Johnson. Don't know him. So you'll get Javon Curse. I've heard of him. Yeah. Uh, this looks like I can't tell what year that says Johnson, but probably late uh, so early nineties. Craig Craig wins up for our, the Seahawks, and this is from. This is from this 1989. This is a 1989. 1989 on that one. Yeah, this is probably a 90. Gilbert from, yeah, it looks like, I can barely read that. 89 too, that's an 89. Okay, right? so then it'll go into uh, what's kind of in these. It'll have these rookie cards. So these will be players up and coming. I'm going to see if any of them I recognize that got drafted. These probably were all in the draft, but I don't. they're not really big names. I have pulled. We need a to call lot it our, dra- our draft expert. There's Henry uh, T- Tirota Odo or whatever his name mm-hmm. is from Alabama. Uh, Monty Smith, uh, da- Smith, the Dallas uh, first round pick. Another. You get a lot of duplicates sometimes. Sure. Um, now, 
So then you go into uh, this would be a, a new card or new rookie card, C.J. Stroud. Okay, so we know okay. that one. And this is from 2022, and that's a Leaf card, Tim. So. All right. Now, um, it looks like, I don't know if they've got the, it's kind of looking like here they don't have the, um, they don't have the licensing for the team because you can yeah. see that how generic, if you guys can kind of see how generic, yeah, <laughs> we're have. not seeing the team name on there, so they don't may not have the team, the NFL license for that. The and teams. then this is a, what they call a season ticket card, which they're uh, they're a little bit rare. And this is a Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, Jimmy Garoppolo, San Francisco. So there you go. And now this is we'll, a 2021 Panini card. Yeah. Now we will open up the. And pack. again, Panini actually does have the license because you can see the the San Francisco. They did that year anyway. Yeah, exactly. They did that year. So this would be uh, 2022 cards. These will be a lot of uh, newer players. Malik, Malik Willis. Willis. Um, who's that? Brandon Smith. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, uh, Pierre Strong Jr. and Jalen Warren. So there's not a lot in there. These are what they call artistry cards. They're basically drawings. Uh, some people like them and collect them. So anyway, all not too bad for five bucks. Uh, you all, it seem like I always get my monies back out of them. That's why they're fun to open. And sometimes this will be a 1990 score or upper deck or something card instead of that one. But that's what we had tonight. So uh, out of out of all these cards, I don't know what probably is my favorite. The Jimmy Garoppolo card in the CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud is probably going to be up there. And you got there. the Mozzie Smith, which is nice. Mozzie so you can put Smith. that with your Cowboy cards. For sure. And then I liked that one card that you held up that was kind of both different on both sides. That was uh, that was that one. That one. Yeah. I thought this one was kind of just that is cool. Just a cool looking card. But yeah. anyway, seems like you always get your money back out of them. And one in four will contain a hit. So this is one. I have two more to open. The other two, one of them will probably have an autograph or something in it. There you go. Yeah. Well, cool thank stuff. you for bringing that, Tim. It's yeah. always fun to do that. Uh, and I like opening the cards. I'm, I'm more of a baseball fan, but even seeing the football cards is kind of cool, especially because we we follow teams. Yeah. And so uh, seeing some of the guys like Mozzie Smith that we just recently drafted. We'll do a base one. Yeah. Hey, that Mozzie Smith time. may end up being worth more than any of them. You never know. Maybe. So, uh, but anyway. Uh, Tim, uh, before we wrap it up, I am going to tell the story of the concert. And I kind of want to say this till the end because... Um, I may cry a little bit, and I just wanted to, if I'm going to get emotional, I kind of wanted to be able to go off the air if I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> That's all but, right. Um, uh, I talked about it a little bit last time, and um, I recently kind of told this story to our youth. I'm teaching the, uh, the youth uh, class at church this month, so mm -hmm. I kind of tell them the story too. I gave them the option if they want to hear this or do a, like a regular lesson, they want to hear this. And so, mm -hmm. uh, so we had a concert for a musical artist named Ross King at the church, and uh, you may not know who Ross is. Uh, a lot of people don't. That's okay. Um, but uh, Ross is a different kind of Christian artist. I'll put it like that. So the way I discovered him was I was listening through the new Christian music playlist on Spotify, and I heard one of his songs named Golden one day during the pandemic, and it really spoke to me. And so I ended up uh, listening to more of his music, uh, several songs, and just really liked this stuff. Ended up listening to the album that all that stuff on and just really liked it. In fact, I ended up listening to almost his entire like recent catalog and just really loved all of it. And so um, I contacted him probably about, I guess about a year ago because I, I started following him on Facebook and I, and he noticed, I noticed that he was going to be in Central Texas. And I'm like, well, why is he coming to Central Texas? That's really close by. So I, you know, I messaged him and I'm like, hey, you know, if you're going to play this church in Central Texas, like what does it cost, you know, to, uh, to, to have you come? I was like, I'm just curious. It's like, I didn't think I'd actually have him come, but I'm like, oh, how much would it, ha would it cost to have you come to our church? And, you know, he gives me the amount and it's not expensive, but it's not cheap either. Right. Somewhere kind of in the middle. And um, he sent that back, and I promptly ghosted him and didn't talk to him ever again, uh, for the most part, or at least for a while. Um, and the reason why is because, like, I'm not the kind of guy, uh, I think I mentioned this on the show, I'm kind of introverted, guys. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to, uh, like, contact an artist I don't really know on Spotify and have not played my church. Like, that's not really me. That's, like, the guy that, I, you know, I'm not really comfortable with that. And so I thought, well, at least he responded. That was kind of cool and everything. And so, you know, I emailed him and, you know, I got an idea. And so I just kind of kind of did away with it at that point. Didn't think anything of it. And then um, I went to another concert for another Christian artist. And, and after I came out of that concert, I really felt like something was telling me, you need to contact Ross again. And I don't know why. Um, but, you know, it's just like I just really felt like, you know, you need to do that. You need to do that. And I promptly stuffed that right down and said, I'm not going to do that. 
right. mm. and it's like okay i don't i mean i don't know what this is but i'm okay you know i'm just gonna ignore it and make it go away um but then ross posted again he's like hey you know if you guys want to do concerts or anything just let me know you know i i can i can give you kind of like a payment plan if you need mm-hmm. it. and so i was like well that sounds good and so i emailed him and he was like um he was like you know yeah if, in fact he was like, if you want to, um, if you want to have, if you want to have me at your church, I'm already going to be in your area on June 29th. Mm-hmm. And so, if you want to do a concert on June 30th or July 1st, I'll be right there in town, and I can just stop by. No pressure or anything. I'm just saying, I'll be there. And so, I looked at the calendar. I'm like, that that date sounds really familiar. It turned out that June 30th was like the day after VBS ended, mm-hmm. and for some reason, that seemed really prophetic to me. I'm like, golly, that's kind of cool. I don't know. That's I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And but I'm like, I, I'm still like, I don't know. I don't know if I need to do this. I don't even know how to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, I talked to my pastor about it, and I'm and I'm like, like, what would I do if, um, like, how would we do this? And of course, he starts thinking about all the logistical stuff, and I do too, because I'm kind of that kind of person that's like, right. okay, what are all the problems that I need to deal with mm-hmm. if this is going to happen? And so um, he brings up all the logistical stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know if any of this stuff is, you know, I don't know about all this. And so I just pray about it a lot. And, um, you know, God said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to pay for it. And you're going to you're going to invite everybody and and you're going to have them come. And that's what you're going to do. And um, I didn't I mean, I felt I felt that way, but I wasn't for sure. And I talked to my wife about it. And she's like, well, if you feel that way, you need you, we need to do it. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's, it's it's a lot of money. But if you really do feel that way, you need to do it. And so still, I'm like, like, I don't like how, I don't even know how to run a soundboard. Right. Okay, like I need somebody to run sound. I don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't have the money beyond probably, you know, uh, the, the money I've already committed to really do anything more like pay for hotel rooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, but my wife was like, you just need to do it. And so I went and talked to my pastor and I'm like, here's the deal. We're going to do it. It's going to be free. And you just, you know, just tell me if I, you know, just let me know if that date works, the June 30th date works and we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, he's like, okay. And, um, I think that's awesome that he was very, he was very, he was kind of supportive of it, which I mean, I didn't know if he would. So we book it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what in the heck have I gotten myself into? I don't know how to do any of this stuff. And so um, I book it, and the next Sunday, they announce it at church. And, and I'm thinking to myself, I need to go talk to the tech guys because, um, you know, I need to get their help or whatever. So even before, though, I was thinking that in my head. And all of a sudden, like after church, a tech guy comes up and says, hey, you need me to run sound for that? I'm like, yeah, I do. And he's like, I'll be here. I didn't have to ask. And then... Um, I was worried. I was like, well, I'm going to have to give him a hotel room and food and all this stuff. And so I called Tim because um, because Tim has some experience in this. And he's booked some stuff for churches and things. And so I called Tim and we get together to put together his blitz, which we talked about. And without me even telling Tim that I had all those worries, Tim goes up, you know, I think. And he just says, you know, I think I'd really like to pay for the hotel and the food um, if, if you if if that'd be OK. And you didn't even know. I didn't even mm-hmm. ask you that. that. Mm-hmm. But I was really worried about that because, like I said, I'm already putting in so much money for this, right. and I wasn't for sure. Kind of tapped out, <laughs> right? And, but without me even asking, Tim offered, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Well, that's amazing," because I was super worried about that. And um, fortunately, we didn't have he didn't need the hotel, right. which kind of mm-hmm. worked out, and we only had to get one meal, which was easy. Mm-hmm. But um, but it was so awesome that that stuff just kind of happened, and I didn't I didn't have to ask anybody because, like I said, I'm not good at asking people anyway. And so um, Tim and the audio guys just offered it, which I thought was awesome. So leading up to the concert, though, I just start having all of these uh, kind of mini panic attacks. Like, um, I just, I don't know, like, you know, what if Ross doesn't show up? Or what if, right. what if he's, he's kind of controversial. What if he plays a controversial song and everybody walks out? Or yeah. <laughs> um, all this stuff. I mean, just like really just, I mean, kind of panicking a little bit inside. Because, I mean, I've never done this before, right? So it's like I'm panicking inside and I can feel this panic. But, you know, um, over that panic was just this voice saying, it's all going to work out. Okay, it's mm-hmm. going to be fine, and you're going to be fine, and it's going to be awesome. So um, so as we approach, you know, we had VBS, and of course, mm-hmm. like, I'm in full, we're kind of in full-blown panic mode for that, just trying to get everything done, which we do. And we're leading up to VBS, and my wife goes, well, what if, um, what if the kid's sang one of Ross's songs with him? And it's like, well, I hadn't even thought about that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm even scared to ask him. Right. right? Cuz it's like I I mean I don't know this guy. I don't right. really know him very well at all. I mean, how well do you know of somebody you listen to on Spotify? Right. Probably not very well, right? Mm-hmm. I, that's about how well I know him. But um 
you know, my wife's like, how, and I just introduced her to this certain Ross King song called Good Company. Mm-hmm. And and she's like, man, I think, you know, the chorus to that really goes along with the VBS theme. And it'd be really cool if the VBS kids could sing that with him. But I'm like, I don't know if I want to ask him. You know, mm-hmm. like, I'm just really scared. But I'm right. like, you know, if Deirdre feels like it's something I should do, my wife, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I, I write him and I'm like, um, hey, you know, um, you know, your song Good Company would be okay if the VBS kids sang this with you. And he shot back an email saying, that would be great. And mm-hmm. I was just like, wow, um, I totally thought you'd say no. Mm-hmm. Because it's kind of like actors never want to work with animals or kids, right? right. It's, like, it's like, you know, I don't want to do that. But he wrote back and he's like, no, I definitely want to do that. And I was yeah. like, wow, that's that worked out awesome. I never would have thought. And so um, we're leading up to the concert and everything. And um, we get all the registrations in and it ends up being 250 people. Which is about um, 137 more than I thought would show up. Mm. <laughs> or 237 more than right. I thought would, right. would show up. And so um, I, I was like, I, I'm calling my, you know, my pastor and I'm like, hey, are we going to have enough are we going to have enough space to put all these people? And I'm like, you know, I'm like, are we going to have too many people or something mm-hmm. like this? And Deirdre's like, I think we're going to have just the right amount of people. And it's like, okay, I'll trust you. And so, mm-hmm. um, so we get to the concert day. Okay. The day of the concert. And he tells me I'm going to be there around four, probably a little bit before. So four o'clock comes and he's not there. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, you know, at this point, like I'm in full blown panic mode. Like, mm-hmm. okay, oh my gosh. Like, my biggest fears are coming true. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm never going to be able to do this. Um, and then 4.30 comes around. He's still not there. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, man, I'm kind of a mess. I'm like, you know. Yeah, concert started at 6.30. Yeah, right? 6.30. So, so concert, time, but he's but... got to he's gotta do sound check. He's got to perform with right. the kids. He's got to do practice and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, we got to get this show on the road. So um, about 4.45, he shows up, okay, okay, and finds the place and comes up and everything. And, um, you know, I shake his hand and the first thing he says is like, well, where do you want me? And so he just, he goes straight to sound check from there. I don't talk to him at all. And um, he gets everything set up. And then after the sound check, I do get to talk with him a little bit. And he seems like a good guy. I was like, okay, yeah. I, you know, I like his music. I like his message and everything. And, um, and so, you know, then we're, you know, he, um, we help him out with his merch and kind of getting everything set up and everything like this. And then the concert, the concert happens and guys, I, I'm not, exa- I mean, to me, it was one of the, it was one of the best like moments maybe of my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not, I love his music, but it's not, it's the topics he talks about. He doesn't talk about regular Christian music. Like I'm happy. You're happy. We're also happy and God is good. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that message. The kind of, the kind of message that uh, Ross gives in his music is stuff like, um, um, you know what? Um, I'm depressed right now and it really sucks, but God's still there. And that's yeah. the kind of messages he delivers in his music. Or, um, uh, you know, uh, if you build a house and God's not in it, the whole thing's just going to fall down. <laughs> you know, yeah. stuff like this. And you know what? Those kind of messages are really hard, but they're real messages. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not the kind of sugary, sweet stuff that you get like with regular Christian music. And they won't play Ross on regular Christian radio because his message is tough. And it's not, it's not, it's not safe you know, is really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not, it's not what, what is it positive and encouraging. That's what every Christian music radio station wants their music to be as positive and and encouraging. In fact, one of the songs that is his most popular song was covered by a really big Christian artist, Josh Wilson. And Caleb basically told him, we won't play that because um, it's not positive and it's not encouraging. Mm. Even though it's a fantastic song about going through mental health issues and having God there with you. So, um, and he can be very controversial. He talks a lot about politics. He talks a lot about racism. Mm-hmm. Okay. And those are topics that are not comfortable for people. Okay. But I tell you what, the concert was fantastic. It and was. he did a great job. Yeah. Tim and his wife came. Yeah. And um, I got to talk to y'all after the concert. And um, your wife, I, I think she, she got a little emotional through the whole thing. I was definitely emotional through the whole thing. I'm going to get yeah. emotional now. I've been talking about it. But um, I totally get that. Because Ross's music, it hits you like here. Mm-hmm. You know, it hits you, it hits you hard. It's, it's almost like every, every one of his songs is like a, ser- a sermon in itself about, you know, kind of like going through stuff. Right. And, and if you're going through something and you listen to his music, it connects with you like nothing else will. Right. Because I think everybody thinks of this pie in the sky one day and, and, and all this stuff, but we live in a real world with real problems, no matter who you are. Uh, we have financial issues. We have, uh, Stuff just weighs on your on your brain. Even like you said, John, you were coming in this panic attacks that you were having and fear and stuff. And, you know, just not everything falls into place like it should. And it, some of you probably listen to this. Your life is probably not what you thought you would be at this stage in life. 
And you know what? That's okay because you're right where you need to be. And uh, sometimes we need to just let, let understand that we all go through something, you know, and we all have struggles and we all, and that's what's great because we need each other. And that's what makes uh, even our show, what helps us uh, and motivates us to help you guys is because there's times we need help. There's times when we can't fix our game and we had to reach out to somebody else who taught us. Now we share that knowledge with you. But really our show is a lot about life and how that no matter what, um, Arcade is what brought us together, what makes us good friends, and why some of you are good friends and so why I've met some of you when, when I travel and stuff because it gives us a bond there. But there's also a struggle there that we all find uh, games break, people break, things happen, uh, unexpected things happen. You know, uh, electricity power goes out here in Texas. You know, my daughter didn't have power for three days and stuff. And it's not so much how you deal with adversity um, or that you're never going to have to deal with adversity. You are. It's how you handle those things when they come your way. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, just going back to Ross's music for a minute, yeah. Ross's music is real. Yeah. It's not fake. No. And so much of, so much of, I mean, Christian music in general feels fake. Yeah. It feels like, and it feels like the mom Instagrammer who's taking the perfect shot of her with her kids saying, I'm so blessed. And look, (laughs) there's nothing wrong with that person. I hope that person is super happy and everything. But guess what? I get depressed. Right. Like, and I deal with panic attacks and anxiety. Like I deal with that stuff. Okay. And I want to know that, I want to know that I can get through it. Okay, I want to know I can get through the tough times. That's what Ross's stuff is about. It's about getting through the tough times. And so, you know, when when you hear his music, it moves you in that way because you you realize it's not fake. He all the stuff he's writing about is stuff that he's felt and stuff that all of us have felt. You felt it. Like Tim mentioned, we mm. go through tough times. We're real people. We're not people who are fake happy all the time. And when you have that fake happiness, people can tell. When you're not mm. being real with people, people can tell. Mm-hmm. And and that's the thing is Ross doesn't put up any kind of walls or anything. He breaks it all down and says, look, this is what I'm dealing with. He writes songs about the stuff he's dealing with. I just lost my dad. And here's a song about it. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, I just, uh, I just got really depressed about something or I'm really struggling financially right now. And here's a song about it mm-hmm. because that's real guys. We struggle like that. All of us do. And Ross's music has got me through like the pandemic because of that. You know, I started listening to him then because his music connected with me through that tough time. We were all going through a tough time. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, to see him up there singing and telling the stories about this stuff, those songs are not just songs he wrote because, oh, you know, I just had this idea for a song and I thought it would really do well. All the songs, Tim can tell you from every story he told, were about specific events in his life that he had experienced or somebody close to him had experienced. Mm-hmm. And when you when you have that kind of honesty in your songwriting and in your message, people can tell and people connect with that. Because you and me, we're not perfect, okay? Tim and I, Tim's not perfect. I'm not perfect. And like I said, we go through stuff. And so Ross's music will connect with you. If you're going through stuff, it connects with you on that level and that's what i appreciate about it but that's why he'll never get played on mainstream christian radio right because people don't want to deal with the tough stuff they want they want the god's so good i'm so good life's so good okay and look nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with it but it ain't real you know i mean you may feel like that sometimes you may feel like everything's good and i got all this in hand that's great but um you know the vast majority of times i don't feel like that tim i feel like i'm struggling and so the concert happens, and I got to talk to Ross, and he's the nicest guy ever. And his me- and every song I hear from him, and I sent him like every song, mm-hmm. and every song is a good song to me. Right. Like, all of his music is so good. And so I would encourage you to go out and listen to Ross. Um, but my message you to, to you today is that um, I couldn't have done all this um, without without a lot of help. And it wasn't. I don't. I don't feel like it was me who really put all this together. I felt like God did it, and mm-hmm. I was just the person he used to do it. Um, and so, um, you know, it wasn't like, cause if, um, if you were picking a person to do something like this, you mm-hmm. wouldn't have picked me. And I think about, um, and I know I'm going to get a little faith way here. And if you're not into Christian faith, that's fine. But, um, it's kind of like when God picked Moses, Moses probably thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. God, if you were going to pick somebody, you sure wouldn't pick me. Right. Um, Noah probably thought the same thing. God, if you're going to pick somebody to build this art, why'd you pick me? Right. I'm not a carpenter. I'm right. Exactly. Builder. I don't know how to build a boat. boat. Right. <laughs> You know, and I felt the same thing. I don't know how to put on a concert. What am I doing here? You know what? God gave me every tool that I needed to do it. 
Mm. And even through the times where I, where I thought I couldn't get through, he took care of it. Mm. And so, um, and so I'm humbled because I've never, I don't know if I'll ever go through that again or if I'll ever do anything like that again. But for that one night and for this one event, it was the most awesome thing. I've one of the most awesome things I've ever experienced. And, um, you know, like I said, if it would have been just me alone, it wouldn't have happened. And I know, I know that God made it happen. I was just the person he happened to use. And it's no different than any other story you hear in the Bible, because that's what God, God does, is he uses people to Ordin- get his, to get his work done. He uses ordinary people. Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Moses couldn't speak, right? I had tongue and speech impediment. Exactly. And I mean, and, stuttered. and, you know, I mean, and Paul had a big hump on his back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you read the stories in the Bible. None of these people were perfect, and I'm no different than them. I'm not perfect. You know, but that doesn't mean that God can't use you to do something cool. And I, I really feel like that's how he used me. I feel like he used me to do something really cool. And I think a lot of people, because they heard Ross's message of it's okay to be just you and not be happy and carefree all the time, I hope a lot of people were were filled up in their faith with that. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's the real message of Christianity is that you don't have to be perfect. You don't even have to be... You don't even have to be, be good, good. Right. <laughs> and right. and and you can still you can still be a Christian, you know. Yeah. You, and, and there's so many images that we put out there, and so many p- images that people put out there saying this is what Christianity looks like. This is what Christianity looks like. This is what following Jesus looks like, or whatever. Okay, real faith means going through the bad times too, and it's not just going through the good stuff. Christianity started with a very horrible act, really, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jesus dying on the cross. If you're really into that. Okay. That's a horrible act. Why should we expect everything to be perfect? I mean, because it, start, it never started perfect. It started messy. And we're all messy. Mm-hmm. Okay, You, me, everybody here. And, and, but just because you're messy, and just because you don't have it all figured out, and just because you're depressed, just because you have anxiety, doesn't mean that he can't use you to do something awesome. And that, that's my message. That's like the main thing I think I got from this. There's a lot of stories. And a lot of morals I've taken from this whole thing. But that's probably the main one. Um, and obviously I'm getting a little emotional about mm-hmm. it. But, um, you know, uh, I'm a very... I, I know a lot of you people may not... A lot of people, you guys are... This is the after show, so I mean, I'm talking about this. But a lot of you guys may not... You may not be a Christian or you may not have faith. Um, you know, and that's fine. I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're listening. And this may not change your mind at all. And that's fine. Okay. Um, my, my goal here on... In, on the, but the whole time when I'm on this planet, my goal is just to love people. That's my goal. And to help people. Okay? I'm not here to be judgmental. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm here to be understanding. And I think that's where some Christians get it wrong, Tim. Yeah, I think so. Is that they want to be judgmental. and But my whole goal here is to be understanding. And so whatever you're going through, I get it. You know, because mm-hmm. I've gone through stuff too. But you're not alone. Okay? Mm-hmm. You're not. And... You can, you know, I hope that you can find a deep faith, if not in God, in something. Because I really feel like it's given my life so much meaning. And I know it will give your life meaning, too. So I'm going to stop. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. I don't need to say anything I'll help him wrap up. (laughs) That's right. I'll help him wrap up. So we want to thank you guys for watching. And for those of you who stuck around, and we just got just twenty dollars from Russell Gibson. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Russell. We appreciate those donations so much. And like I said, I mean, basically, we only make enough money maybe to uh, feed us every live show. That's about all the money we make. But we do appreciate we, every single bit. But of But we have a good so meal, much. and we thank you for watching. Thank y'all for all your time. Thank you for sending your questions. Thank you for being involved. Thanks in the for chat. listening to me ramble for twenty minutes or whatever it was. <laughs> I mean, so even if you didn't get anything out of it, thanks for stay, sticking around. No. So but um, I, I, we appreciate you guys so much. And it really is, I mean, it's, it's so awesome to have so many of you guys watching us on a, week, on a monthly basis. I mean, you know, we wouldn't do what we do if it wasn't for you guys and the support we get from you. So right. thank you guys for that. And, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're just going to sign off here. So uh, thank you, Tim, for being here. And thank all you for watching and listening. And uh, we just, you know, we hope that you guys have a great month. We'll see you back here in August. And, uh, you know, just take care. You know, go out there and... Help somebody else, you know. But do whatever you have. We talked about Tim talks about this all the time. You can help somebody, right? Even if you don't have money, you know, you can help people. It right. doesn't take money sometimes. But uh, go out there and do something for somebody, you know. Or or even if you just maybe you can just be the person who understands somebody. Yeah, you, you can't know? change the world, but you can change the world for one person. Exactly. Do that. So sounds good. Well, we'll see you here next month. Thanks, guys.